I know it's bad to start off a stream and mention, sign my petition, but that one petition about getting Australian politicians to, like, look at, uh, like, digital ownership of video games, that's about to close today. It'll be closed by the time you watch the VOD. You know what else is closed by the time you watch VOD? 3, 2, 1! Hello everybody, welcome to the stream. It is the B&R stream today on this fine 20th of May 2024. I hope you're having a wonderful week and we'll have a wonderful week ahead of you. My week has been nice and chill. Usually I have very like loud, noisy, whatever streams and weeks, but it's been actually quite chill. I've not like worried about anything. You know what else I'm not gonna worry about? Jumping to the stream, let's do that right now. Woo! Let's see how smooth this transition actually was. Did I? Oh, I nailed it. I nailed it. Uh, we are playing a brand new game that came out 28 years ago. Oh, gosh. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is a, a European release, although it's a Japanese game that only ever gotten released once. Uh, well, it's had, it's had various, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very, how do I put it? There's lots of games in this franchise. Uh, this particular game, only released in Europe, no US, uh, translation, uh, this game is called Penny Races, but as I will probably call it a lot, Choro Q. Choro Q is, uh, <laughs> well, let this demo with a very loud, uh, <laughs> loud music, uh, the whole game is bombastic music. Choro Q, from what I can tell, is a Japanese... Uh, toy brand of these little miniaturized cars. I don't know if any of them have like this little wind back functionality where it's like you kind of roll them back a little bit and then they can go forward a fair bit. Like just on their own. You know, you're just like building up some kind of elastic inside them or something, but they're kind of cool. Um, almost all of these are actually based on real cars as well. And uh, hilariously, I don't think they ever had to ask any of these car brands to put them in the games. So. Uh, they all have these very close to real cars going on in, uh, going on in them. Um, but what are these games? Well, there existed a Choro Q game on the MSX in 1984, uh, which was a very just kind of simple, um, platformer. It sort of reminds me a little bit of, um, of, a. Uh, I don't know, I was gonna say Mario Bros, that's not quite correct. Um, but effectively, you, you go from left to, well, you got like a kind of wide screen, you gotta kind of pan across it, and, uh, you gotta knock down the little robot parts on each side to build a little robot, and you gotta do it in the right order. Um, so every level it's a different order. Meanwhile, there's some jerks coming by, and you have to jump on them. It's a bit of a weird game, I don't know. This is the second Choro game where they just call the Choro Q. So just treat it as like the first one again. Um, and naturally this kind of comes right at the craze of games like Daytona USA and uh, Ridge Racer and uh, I'd put a little bit of Sega Rally in there as well. Just a lot of really incredible um, arcade racing games around the mid 90s. And uh, Choro Q here I believe has always been a home console release. In fact there's actually like lots of different games all over the shop. Uh, for all the consoles, um, but each one of them only came out for one console in particular, and and our demo is repeating, and do I have to, there we go, <laughs> I was like, I don't have my thing on, um, but let's jump into it, pretty much the game consists of two modes, or three modes, you've got a two-player mode if you really want to, there's a free play mode, which uh, gives you the ability to pick one of these various cars, and uh, you take it to one of these six tracks. There's not really too much to it. Um, I don't think you actually... You, know, you don't really get anything from this mode, but... Uh, more than you get from the arcade mode, but it's, it's definitely just kind of a fun curiosity. But really, the big meat of the game comes from the, the quirkiness and the charm of this Grand Prix mode. So let's dive in. That's my uh, previous save, so we'll just dive in. Um, one thing I love about this game is how just very PS1. The, the music is. It's just these wonderful chip tune chip tunes? That's not quite what I mean, but like, they're kind of these MIDI jams. They don't try to be like, you know, Red Book Audio. But they're just grooving, they're just jazzing. Also, <laughs> I love the background here. Like, it's just this grotesque dirt. I love it. 
Uh, we have six cars to choose from. You may recognize some of these, like this is a Skyline, this is a Mini Cooper, I think this is a Lamborghini, and this is a VW Beetle, and this is a BMW, and this is just a bus that you, in, in Tokyo. This is just a Tokyo bus. Um, every single car performs the same, so don't feel like you're locked into anything in particular if you pick a certain car. Um, you gotta have chomp sounds when you type in the your name as well, right? That's usually how it goes. Um, pretty much the game uh, is, um, I guess, if I say it's like Gran Turismo, that's really wrong. But effectively, how the game works is that you've got a little bit of money, and uh, you clearly don't have enough money for anything in particular, but you'll go around, you'll win some races, you buy some parts, and you'll be able to, you know, improve your car, and you'll do better and better. Um, one thing I love about this game is how kind of quirky some of the parts are. Um, we start off quite simple, there's only like three speedometers and three horns, there's not really too many in this game. Um, but treat this game as a bit of a proof of concept, because the second game, and very the third game, and very, very, very afterwards, it is take this concept to the most incredible extreme. This franchise gets incredible, but maybe you won't quite see it in this first game. But you'll definitely see a lot of great charm, plus also it's a good podcast game. It's just, you know, racing games are great for, for that kind of stuff. Uh, also, uh, you've got a body shop, so if you, if you didn't like your car's body, well, good on you. You can buy a Supra. That's the Supra, right there. You gotta identify your car by just a grey kind of body. Also, I'm very certain uh, we have uh, Mitsubishi Lancer Evo... This is an Evo 3, I think. This <laughs> is kinda old. But yeah. Chorokyu HG... HG2 is great. HG2 is amazing. Um, they're all they're all really good. I played um, Wonderful like a couple of months ago, and Wonderful is tremendously incredible. Um, so, uh, I will definitely love to give them all a go um, on stream at some point. Also, we have this wonderful question mark menu. What could it mean? We'll find out eventually. And the World Grand Prix is uh, walled off. So, let's dive in. Uh, you start off with three tracks. And uh, we'll, um, well, we'll, we'll start off with the normal circuit on easy. Or it's an easy circuit. Um, the key thing, I guess, for you to note is... You'll only get money if you come first, second, or third, and winning and coming first is even better. But all the progression in the game is tied to having some first, second, or third rating on every single track. Um, you'll notice this speedometer is incredible. It just goes around the whole screen. You've also got a first-person view if you if you're that kind of person. Some people do, and you got a horn. But other than that, you know, you take it nice and simple. Oh! <laughs> if you play some of the later games, you might really cry a bit by how slow the handling is but that's that's the joy of this game it's starting off real crusty your car is kind of crummy and you'll slowly make money and you'll slowly improve your skills as well because this game is a bit tricky at first you'll probably dive in and you may not even really know how to even come for first second or third in a lot of tracks i like how there's a pit lane as well like there's no reason to go into the pits uh, you can also hit L2 if you want to see a map. It's bang on in the center of the screen, which is a very interesting spot for the map, but sure. Um, this is a very straightforward circuit, though. You just kind of turn right a bit. Uh, if you ever see the car slide or, like, you know, s spin a bit, like if I start turning right a bit hard, uh, the key thing to note is either stop turning, or if you really need to keep turning, release the accelerator. The back of the car will gradually come back to you and then you'll be good. Obviously as well, you could break. You're gonna need to break in some of the later tracks, but this one, not so much. I think if you're really, really good, you, you could probably push for second, but you'll probably find mm, this first track isn't really the most lucrative, we'll just say. The, pri the price for coming first was only 100 gold as well. You saw some of the part prices in that shop, some were like 400. Um, and, uh, that's gonna be the goal of, well, I'm, I'm hoping this game's only really gonna take, like, two stream stops. Because it's not a very long game, but there's certainly a bit of charm to, to how it all goes. I'm gonna keep saying that. Well, I got third, so. Not, not really great, but, you know, we're, we're proof of concepting. We got, we got 50 gold, you know what that means? I can't buy anything. Uh, you could buy the slow steering, if you're silly. 
I mean, you you can. Um, all of these parts, by the way, um, you know, you can buy, you know, one of each, and then you can have them in your little inventory where you can swap them out. Uh, but the slow steering is pointless. Don't don't bother because if you thought the steering was slow, well, why do you think slow is going to be any better? You really just want to jump straight to super quick, and that's going to be the first thing that I purchase as we continue on through the tracks. Let's go on to Highland Short. Now you can see, oh my gosh, come third, you get 100 gold. Second, 200. First, 300. That's going to be, that's going to be our prime position. This is the track. I think you'll probably earn a fair bit of money to start off. Um, it does look a little tricky, but keep at it a bit, and you'll definitely find a lot of, you know, a lot of, I guess, speed in the corners that the, uh, the opponents don't really take. Also, don't... Don't mind that it's dirt. The dirt in this game is not too annoying. There's one track where you'll kind of feel it, but at least here, especially on your default tires, you're sort of wrestling with your steering more than the actual dirt itself. Um, so yeah, there's a there was a chicane there. There's a second chicane here, although this one's a lot, you know. Well, actually, it's a bit more telegraphed, but you just gotta kind of keep track of it. Also, I love, uh, I know it's the European version, so it's actually 50 frames a second, but I love the smoothness, just specifically in this track. This one <laughs> manages to keep the frame rate up very, very well. Um, and actually, like, just to comment, I love the visual style. I know it's, like, horrendous PS1. It's like the ground is completely flat here, the, you know, the fence is just flat, the trees are flat. Um, you know, there's a lot of that. The geometry is super simple. You can clearly see the, like, when you get to a certain point in the track and it just pops in the next bit to go like, oh, okay, that's where the track keeps going. Um, but there's, like, the the perspective warping, the integer warping on uh, all the objects doesn't really kick in that hard. Um, and you don't get, like, weird kind of early PS1 nip mapping that's got this kind of quirky behavior. I mean, uh, there's a charm for all games that have that kind of style, but I just love how bright and vibrant this one is, and then how just gratuitously, like, practical everything is. It's like, oh, we're in the middle of the mountains. Let's just add a giant yellow and black sign telling you to turn left. It's just, you know, everything is super clear. Everything is very, very practical, I guess I'd just say, so. I love that sign at the top also changing uh, between laps. Very nice. Uh, why, by the way, I am making, you know, a killing on this track, I tell ya. Because the trick is just let off the accelerator and just lean right and then left. You'll, you'll Scandinavian flick. You'll do okay through that chicane. This, this one, same boat. Just let go of the accelerator when you get close to it. Because you don't slow down very fast. You can see, like, I'm, as I'm going through these corners, I'm really not losing many, you know, miles per hour, but yet, I'm grippy. You can totally... That's your trick to beating most of these games, really. This one, you do have to break for. Nope, my speed's slowing down. Um, touching a wall is way more detrimental than just taking it properly, so... Try to learn how much to break and how much to turn if you ever play this game. Um, but you'll, you'll get the hang of it, and you'll certainly... You've got lots of leeway on this track allowing you to easily get 300 gold. No sweat. Is gold the currency? We're just going off gold. It's G. What, what else could it be? There we go. I love this, like... What is it? Is it, is it, is it uh, kind of looks like a Lancer in the back. A little looping texture. Anyway, let's go to the parts shop. Now I can buy the super quick steering wheel. There's not really anything better in the game, so you might as well... Go for it. Uh, all of these parts, by the way, apart from, uh, you know, whatever's going on here. Um, this shop is the shop. Uh, you'll find later games start to get a bit more, um, a bit more creative with, uh, what kinds of things are available to you to start off. Uh, these tires definitely look quite interesting, but I'm actually gonna hold off for them, because the real next thing you want to consider is your transmission. Notice that manual transmission is always cheaper. Also, the normal manual transmission has an extra gear. But you probably want like MT5 speed or probably MT5 speed. I think high speed is actually like the longer gear shifts allowing you to reach a higher speed if you're maxing out at fifth gear and the regular speed mode. But as we start off, you know, we hit top of fourth gear and there's not really a, um, 
I don't know, you're not going to hit the top of fifth gear just yet. You can obviously buy some engine improvements. 3,000 is just forever away, so I think plus two is usually a comfy spot. And then other than that, you know, I guess you could probably get a lot of tires. Got all around your off-roads and then and your racing, but we'll get there. Let's continue on with another race. We have the Tunnel Short. This one has the same rewards as the other one, and I think the track is like just ever so slightly longer. Uh, I also find this one a bit trickier, so if I want to grind money in the short term, I pick the other track. And you might see me go back for that one a little bit. This one has another massive chicane. Oh, it's not a chicane, it's a, a hairpin. That's what it is. Again, I love just the aesthetic on this one. Um, although you will see some uh, some Hall of Mirrors effects going on. Like, <laughs> like it just doesn't render a skybox in this level at all. So it's all Hall of Mirrors when, it, when it's uh, when it's showing nothing at the end of the, the corridor. Here's that hairpin. You want to break fairly hard, and if you touch the wall, yeah, it's kind of detrimental. But yeah. Uh, I did equip the... Did I equip the turning? I have no idea if I did. I wasn't looking. I, I probably did. And if I didn't, then... There you go. I blame that. No, I think I did equip the turning. The turning is just... You need it. Because you don't want slow turning. That's not a skybox. That was painted on the wall. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, we might as well dive into today's topics. So, let's start off with... Um, the uh, the Blendo to tones down whatever controversy he sees on Twitter. Actually, I think this past week, Twitter now officially redirects to x.com. If you're ever going to Twitter, it's going to go to x.com. And that's throwing me off a lot. Because whenever I see x.com, I think xcom, I think, you know, aliens. Yeah, this one's kind of tricky to get to the first place guy. It's just a bit far ahead. I might be able to compete with him, <laughs> but it's that darn hairpin, because it's it's not that you're going so slow, although he seems to be struggling on that one too, but it's that when you start trying to pick up again, it's like, oh, I'm so, I'm so sluggish. And uh, very unfortunately, another gearbox actually, arguably, maybe I shouldn't go for the gearbox. Maybe I should go for the engine. Actually, no, no, we'll go for the gearbox. Um, I am in the lead, though, so I might actually be able to nail this. Again, you got, like, a chicane there you want to watch out. This one you can actually just kind of ride a little bit, but make sure you straighten out, because if you're slightly off-angle and you're on the jump, you can't control in mid-air, you're going to dive into the wall and you're just going to lose all your speed at the most unfortunate part of the track. So... Uh, but yeah, let's dive into the controversial topic. Um, uh, my timeline is going on about the new Assassin's Creed. Uh, I would like to mention I have never played an Assassin's Creed, but I have played Far Cry 3. That, that, that doesn't really mean too much, but uh, I think a lot of people... Uh, I well, I think we're at this point where Assassin's Creed really shouldn't be like a polarizing subject in the sense of the people who keep playing Assassin's Creed every time just are going to be unfazed by this, and the people who haven't really been keeping up with Assassin's Creed probably weren't that interested in playing it anyways. Um, they did... I do remember Assassin's Creed used to be, like, milked to the extreme in the Xbox 360 gen, and then uh, Assassin's Creed Unity came out in a absolutely horrendous state, and also I think people... Gen oh, there you go, see? And now this is going to be sad because uh, I'm going to get absolutely caught up by this chap. And I'm going to lose my first place because of one singular mistake. One singular mistake. It's not the end of the world because uh, most of these races are a little bit easier when you've got more parts. And not because you're faster than your opponents, but because mistakes like that don't hurt you as hard. So I've got a, a medal and everything. So we've got uh, two new tracks. Um, let's check out Woodland. You'll see the money has gone up. We are 500, 300, 150, but, uh, note, this is another dirt track, and, uh, yeah, this one's a tricky one, so I'll give it a go. And if we don't succeed, I'm not gonna grind at it. We're gonna try and get some parts and continue on from there. 
It does suck if, though if you if you lose because no reward. It, it yeah, pretty much if you if you if you're struggling, you just got to do the easy races. Um, but I kind of like this uh, balance between the skill and the parts because I mean I got first place in one race. And granted, I nailed that one, like, pretty flawlessly, because I'm just good at that track. But, uh, the, the tunnel one, it's like, oh, I mess up once, and it's like, oh, okay, we'll drop you down a second. But it's not the end of the world, I could continue on the game and check out these other tracks, and also on top of that, you know, you can keep trying at other tracks to get first, which you'll get more money, or you can, uh, you know, go back to the easier tracks and grind a little bit. The options are there for the player. This, yeah, this part is just, it's clunky, because <laughs> you've got, like, the sides there. Ah, oh, it's weird. Uh, don't ask me what the sign means. Sail run fast? I did hit a best lap record though. Interesting. Uh... I love this river. This whole track's like a, a great vibe. Also, if you aim slightly right here, then you'll, you'll, you'll hit a shortcut. I didn't hit it, though, so, whoops. I just hit the wall, so I gotta build up from the slow speed again. And I'm in fourth place, so this isn't looking too hot, but... I'll try and nail that waterfall secret. It does require some precision, though. It's not the easiest to get to. But it does help you when you're trying to, you know, get into a, you know, a points position, a money position. A podium, if you will. Um... But yeah, uh, Assassin's Creed, um, yeah, I think ultimately, I haven't even explained what was the controversy, but, uh, this new Assassin's Creed, I think the discussions about this are very, um, grandiose in the sense of people are applying arguments that, uh, should be applied to the whole industry and not specifically Assassin's Creed, so just note that when people are saying this, it's not because of Assassin's Creed, it's just thing, and people are then going, hey, if other games do this, that kind of sucks. There we go, I got into the secret, but I did kind of ding the wall a little bit. The water is acting against you, so if you if you don't quite get this right, then ugh, but at least you do save yourself turning right there, which means you actually do save a bit of time by going through here. You'll, you'll probably see it in my lap time, even after I ding the wall. But you're not going to see me come third, so it's going to be a bit of a shame. Again, music is a vibe. I love it. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so what is the controversy? Well, the controversy is uh, the new game is called Assassin's Creed Shadows. And uh, Assassin's Creed Shadows takes place in Samurai Japan. I do not know my Japanese uh, time periods. Is this the 1500s or this? I really don't know. And I'm kind of, I don't know. I, I just never looked into it. That's, that's just me. It's just ignorance on my end. I'm not trying to make any any broad statement. Uh, let's go back and, and get some money on um, on a Highland Short, because it's fairly quick, I find. And you can uh, certainly get your... Um, yeah, definitely get your money built up. And the music's a vibe. And it runs at like 50 frames a second, so it's all good. Um, the controversy one comes from, uh, it was sort of leak announced, like they announced it right after it had kind of like a poster for it had leak dropped. Um, and, uh, my timeline is going on about how, uh, the main character is of a certain, well, he's, I mean, okay, there's two main characters, first of all. One is of a completely fictional character, and no one is mentioning anything about him because the other character is a real person who people are basically saying was never a samurai. Um, you know, he was just like, uh, he used the sword once, he's not very well documented. But there's certainly a lot of reports, uh, or a lot of, uh, kinds of essays and other kinds of things recently claiming he was a lot more than what really any evidence says. Now, I don't know anything about the history, so I can't even tell you if this is right. But what I can certainly say is that some people do take their history seriously, and on the flip side, I have not seen a single person mention that the previous Assassin's Creed game you played as a thief who was known to move so fast it was like they were teleporting. 
which meant the game developers made let you teleport like it's Dishonored. Uh, like, th there's a part of me that goes, Assassin's Creed, while it should be grounded, doesn't necessarily have to be factual and true. I'm gonna have to say up to the fans on that one. If you're, like, I... I'm not very strong opinionated on that one. I, like, if a game is fun and, uh, you know, they actually make use of whatever setting they go with, even if it breaks from reality, if the setting is used properly, then I'm personally okay with it. But I do get, hey, yeah, if you're not a big fan of that happening, I get it. Um, also, Assassin's Creed uh, in the past has sort of uh, prided itself on being a history kind of game. I remember Assassin's Creed um, Origins. Was it Origins? Had uh, an actual, like, museum mode. It had a whole thing where you could just walk around the map and just, like, you know, uh, like, Half-Life developer commentary, click on the floating icons and you would have an actual history explanation of something related to the thing that you clicked on. Um, so certainly there's a, there's a bit of pride Assassin's Creed always has with, you know, kind of getting history right or something like that. Um, so I kind of get why fans uh, can be upset about that. Um, I also see people on the flip side say, oh, but how dare you discredit this person's achievements. Again, I don't know the person, so I really have no idea. Um, but, uh... <laughs> Sort of secretly, we'll do this race again because I'm like 50 cold off. Uh, secretly, not secretly, but what is kind of understated is the actual cost of Assassin's Creed Origins. Origins? Uh, shadows. Um, let's see if I can type with one hand as well. Try to navigate this because I'm holding X. Assassin's Creed franchise. Oh, I gotta turn left. Uh. Oh, good. I didn't touch the wall. We're good. Um, because I really want to go to the, uh... Go to the Ubisoft page and actually figure out what's the Australian price for this, because, uh, then it will seem absolutely insane to me. But I have seen the, um... The US pricing. And that's already shocking. Um, I think the base game is $70, which is... Uh... Normal in today's day and age, but super duper like unfavorable i don't accept that these games should be costing that much to develop and therefore when i get that price at the end i'm like yeah nah that's not that's not on that's no cash money there um there exists a um i guess a gold edition for 110 dollars i have to reject cookies oh my gosh just give me a price ah <laughs> I'm trying to get the price! Ah. There you go, I've got some prices. Uh, gold edition. Oh man, I guess, I guess the, the name. Alright. We're good, we're good, we're still in first place. Uh, the gold edition. Oh, also there's a pre-order bonus, whatever that means. I don't know what that is. Um, it comes with the season pass and also three days early access. This is $160. Oh, it's actually $100 Australian. Okay. I saw um, the gold edition was 100 I think it was 100 US dollars. Um, which I think is typical for Ubisoft. 160 bucks is a lot of money, Australian. Um, also, like, season pass is always like, ugh, because... Uh, maybe, actually, maybe Ubisoft's been okay with this one, but other devs sometimes just exclude content out of the season pass, uh, or they also um, just make a second season pass later on. Sometimes it's like that. Um, the three days early access, though, miss me with that, because they put it in as, like, a selling point. It's like, oh, you buy the game three days early. No. It means the standard edition, you get the game three days late. It means retail is completely stuffed. Like, they're, incent they're incentivized out of this. The game is done. That's what the three days early access is. The game is done and ready for people to play, because they're not beta testing three days before release. We're not doing that, are we? I'd be, oh, I, on top of that, I would not even accept that to happen. It's like, oh, good job. Good job. Let your players spend all this money QA tests. Um, it's not the case here, but, yeah. Um, and, uh, then there is a 
$190 Ultimate Edition. Uh, I believe this was 130 US dollars. It's a shocking amount. And what does this add? This adds an Ultimate Pack. I came first, so it's okay in the end. The Ultimate Pack contains the Sekiryu Character Pack, including gear and weapon sets for both Naoi and Yasuke, the Sekiryu Beast and Dragon Tooth Trinket, the Sekiryu Hideout Pack, including four unique ornaments to customize the hideout for your Shinobi League, five skill points, A, 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 can we stop that? That's really, <laughs> come on, and the Red Dragon Filter in photo mode. Also, what's the pre-order bonus? It's a singular quest. Uh, so, okay, wrap that up. What are my opinions? First of all, uh, I hate pre-order bonuses because a lot of the time they're either sold as like a very cheap add-on, not part of a season pass. Let's buy this uh, MT5. I should have bought just MT5 speed just right off the bat, actually. Um, yeah. Let's do a... Actually, I think I could probably do the normal circuit. Um, so let's change the gearbox. I'm going to need to pay a little bit more attention for this one. 600, 400, 200. It's even worth a little more money than the uh, than the previous race. So we should have a good run on this one. Uh, so no, with manual transmission, you got to hit R1 and L1. Probably right when you hit 7,000 revs. It's not too bad though, and especially given how, you know, you don't really lose speed unless you hit walls, you should be mostly fine. But definitely fifth gear helps a little bit with uh, getting a bit more speed. So that's all good. This track's nice and fun. Again, one hairpin, and you got a chicane, but uh, you definitely got a bit of grounds to catch up. And if you're really, really good on this, on this uh, hairpin, probably not the easiest when you've got other cars but you can actually do like yeah there's kind of like wide sweep and you'll definitely save a lot of like time compared to the AI on that one so it's very very nice kind of gives me a bit of peach circuit vibes because you've got a lake in the middle or it's like a uh, Tsukuba because you've got the Dunlop tire oh sorry not the Dunlop tire the Takari Takara it's <laughs> not Dunlop um and you also get 50 FPS just here for some reason. Uh, so what else is not on? Skill points! Oh my gosh, can we not do that? Um, it could it could be worse. It could be like Deus Ex Mankind Divided. Where you could only redeem it once. If you used it on a save file and then you started a new game. That pre-order bonus is just gone anyways. <laughs> completely worthless but also wow why would I want the game to be easier I Ubisoft I would pay you no I wouldn't actually pay you for hard modes but like any kind of gameplay mechanic or differentiation really should be offered alongside for every player I don't think there's you know I, I don't see there being any value in segmenting that and to some degree I view it as like a negative value because then it becomes a balancing act of okay if, if I pay extra to get free levels and skip parts of the game, arguably, um, or, uh, or I have an easier time in the game, or is the base game too hard and I needed to have paid more money? That's, this is the problem. I, there's no one size fits all. It all, you know, the game is designed for the every player. It's... There are two separate versions, and me as a consumer, I do not know which version is actually, like, better to play with. Obvi Ubisoft would love me to, to pay for the more expensive one, but, like, if I spoke to a game designer who works at Ubisoft, or really anyone, actually, let me just talk to anyone. Why? I, I, I would just love anyone in the industry. Why would I want free skill points in my single-player game? to get me into the action quicker? Is that it? Oh, okay, then why is it slow to get into the action? Like, th this is the problem. This is the problem. <laughs> like, you, you've intentionally put, like, s very silly creep into your game. Or, it's worthless. We gotta pick one. There's no, there's no in-between on that. Uh, 
Bundling a season pass, uh, I, I'm, I'm cool with that in the sense of I, I don't mind that existing, but definitely until it's out, I have no idea how good it is. And so for me as a consumer, a lot of the times, uh, again, if Ubisoft, I like how I came first on that one, by the way, this should be the one I grind now. So let's buy engine plus two. It'll give me a bit of an oomph. Um, other than that, I think we sort of need to just get some tires, I guess. Because I've got the transmission, maybe we'll get the high speed as well. Wings are expensive and they don't do too much, you could get them last. Um, but probably the, um, the all-round and the racing plus one tire. Um, it's all these intermediate ones and I'm sort of just, because I've played this game before and I know what, <laughs> I know what I'm doing. So I'll just, we'll get that 600 gold. Now you'll definitely feel the car do a bit more oomph. Also the engine sound is different. I love that. Oh, it's a slightly bassier sound, but it's, it's still kind of just PS1. So, I love it. Again, all the AI will catch up for a hot second, but... Ooh, I'm drifting too hard! Yeah. Uh... But the worst part... Hold on, let me pause for a hot second, because I need to tab out and, and look at it. The worst part is, next to that Ultimate Edition, they have Ultimate Edition. Day 1 with Ubisoft Plus. It's the exact same as the regular Ultimate Edition, but with a hundred plus PC games, including new releases. For $23.95 a month. Now, is this necessarily the worst thing? No, I guess. Because it's it's offered alongside the actual cost of the game. Uh, to me, it's like, okay, well, it's something additional. Like, this person plays the exact same game as the person who buys it. The only difference is when they stop their subscription, they don't own the game. Um, given Ubisoft's track record, I don't actually think that's a bad idea these days. There's... Uh, Ubisoft, for reference, I will continue to note this, shut down The Crew. A, uh, almost ten-year-old game, but certainly a game people bought. No one can play it anymore. Ubisoft is also removing it from people's libraries, just so they can't even attempt to download it anymore. Uh... And, uh, they'll probably, you know, I, they haven't done it yet, but what's the odds? Someone's gonna strike down a fan project if it ever exists in the next 10 years. 20 years, it's too far. I can't complain about 20 years, but... Ah, uh, yeah. 24 bucks a month is a lot for a subscription service. Xbox, uh, Pass on PC costs 10.95. I just want to add Australian. Um, it costs a lot more in the US for some reason. Uh, I forgot how much, um, does Origin, does EA have one? Um, all of this stuff is, like, I think probably the more egregious part of this whole experience is, uh, also on top of that, uh, with the Season Pass as well, I've seen some comments of people say in the past, Season Passes have felt like the other half of the content, so really, you know, for a hundred Australian dollars, you're not actually getting that much of an experience, you really need to pay the $160, and then you need to now go, okay, and that was $160. I could have bought, you know, like, like, uh, oh, how many Zinger, bo Zinger boxes are not worth it as much now? I could buy, like, eight, like, actual burgers from, like, real burger shops. I could also just buy a lot of old games for 160 bucks, Or some cool hardware, or, like, Parts of musical instruments. I don't, they're, not, they're not like 160 bucks cheap, but they're certainly ballpark around there. Uh, there's a lot of things you can do with 160 bucks. One singular game is. Oh, oh, oh. I'm like drifting. I'm just constantly tapping the wrong direction. I'm not about to lap a well, I'm not about lapping because it's too far, but. Oh my gosh, jeez. Um, so yeah. Uh, but I think, yeah, I don't know, to, to me, this is like the biggest reason why I personally am not going to be buying these games, or this game, it's one singular game. Uh, so let's buy the all-around plus three tire, because uh, this will be definitely good. There you go, look at these stats go up, by the way, you can totally see your road grip and dirt grip. Probably buy these, uh... Other things while we're at it. So let's uh, switch the horn to horn two. 
but you can't test. You just got to go into a, a, a match and see, a race and see. Um, let's give a Woodland another go. I got the better engine. I've got the better tires. And I mean, all you gotta do is come like in the first, second, or third. There's your different horn. There's your different um. There's a different speedometer. I love the the actual like <laughs> gear layout as well. It's important to to like verbally note when you when you're meant to change gears because I was like looking at it going, I have no idea what I'm looking at now. Oh, I've hit the wall again. Uh -huh. Thank you. Wow. Also, how cool. There's an actual, like, odometer going on. Even if it only applies to this one race, but I like it. Fun fact, actually, when you try to save your game as well, the game is cataloging all the mileage you've taken, so you can just see, like, how far you've driven on the save. Uh, my complete the game save uh, had, um like 500 miles which is probably like too much uh, but I was going for the retro achievement set which is fairly straightforward there's not really any big curveballs associated with it but uh, they do have one which is like you have to win every race in the Grand Prix once we get up to it um, and max point basically have all the points I am I am like launching myself off these like walls off these like ledges for some reason I'm going too slow to even get the shortcut this is, uh, this is kind of... How about let's just, like, try a restart, because uh, I'm not going to win that one. But, yeah, I, I don't know. To me, like, I don't buy a lot of new games. So it's always, um, it's always a bit of, like, a, yeah, you know, like, am I really the, the target audience anymore? I don't know, I've dropped out. I'm the kind of person who plays Char Q on the PS1. But... On the flip side, I'm also the kind of guy who bought the crew. And I'm deeply upset about that one, to the point that I've mentioned it on like four or five streams now. Oh my gosh, first place. Oh yeah, just keep this up now. Kind of a lot more screen real estate with the with the um the odometer with the the analog. These the later games get even wackier with these as well, but that's what I mean by, like, all the pieces are in this one. Everything in this game somewhat manifests as something in a later game. And the music is great. I love it. I should put one on, like, my, uh, my rotation. My, uh, intermission music. Can we do it again? Can we do it twice? We did it! Woo! I should really, like, note something I'm looking for. I sort of just... No... Like, I'm aiming right a little bit. Oh, drifting out. Because oh. you can't turn right while you're in the middle of a kind of drift. It's okay if you're turning the right way, but... Yeah, sure. Sure. <laughs> I'll accept it. Alright, can we win this? see um yeah i don't know that's my that's my two cents um oh someone also noted that uh uh sweet baby ink was uh, founded by ex ubisoft employees um i do not know if sweet baby ink themselves were involved with uh assassin's creed Mir uh, mirage that's not this one uh, assassin's creed shadows actually they might have been involved with all of them to be honest uh, Ubisoft is a listed partner, so um, the potential is there, but uh, I guess you never know until you play it, which probably just means while we don't know, uh, either be skeptic and don't buy it, or I don't know, but I, I'm not gonna... I wish there was a way to reward game developers based on some things that they do in a game, but not all of them. Because uh, certainly there's the full package reward, and then there's like parts of things reward. And if I don't like one thing in a game, 
that doesn't necessarily mean my whole experience is ruined. But it may also mean that one thing kind of does suck, and I really would like the game devs to know that. Um, all these bodies are 500, by the way, so I'm sort of not buying new ones just yet. Uh, we have two new tracks. We have The Big Dome. This is a ra rather short track, actually. So if you're, if you're good at this and you can actually win it, 700 gold your way. The second place reward is only 350 though, which is less than this track, by the way. So if you're not as good, you'll definitely feel it. But uh, I've got, I've got maybe a hunch. We'll, we'll give it a go. It's a very, very cozy track though. It gives me Wario Stadium vibes. And the frame rate definitely feels it. And I forgot manual transmission. Um... But just, uh, yeah, you take the first corner quite wide, kind of lean right, you'll see where everyone else is going. And then, uh, we sort of got to do a, uh, you yeah, know, this is kind of gnarly. It's a, it's a big U-turn, and then it's like a, like a little notch, you want to really slow down for it. Just lean left and right very hard. That's how you succeed your way out of that one. And you'll probably lose a ton of speed going around there. Um, try to take this one kind of weird. It's tough you're gonna just bump and jump around that one and then another hard left and you're at the start line it's a shorter lap so if you're good at this one it's certainly the way to make money I mean we'll see how we go because if I actually win this and sweet lots of money but if not you know the the 600 gold one is uh, probably no better chance Oh, also, people get stuck on this ramp all the time. I don't know what's going on there. I'm gonna, like, take this one really, like, shallow. Uh, it's still, still not good enough. We're doing okay, though. We're doing okay. Um. But yeah. I. Is the controversy overblown? Well, one. Uh, I, I don't know, a part of me is still going to say the exact same thing I said about uh, um, the Stellar Blade stuff, which is guerrilla marketing. If we make a lot of people on Twitter upset about it in some way, and this can be like something so petty or something so stupid, like maybe that's why, maybe, maybe that's the real reason why they chuck in like the, the you know, the easy unlocks. Oh, I did it! Woo! Too good, first go. Lots of money my way. So I was gonna say, like, you know, we gotta buy the racing tires and the off-road tires at some point. Or the lightweight chassis. Which one do I buy first? Maybe I do buy the lightweight chassis first. Mountain Pass is gonna kick my butt though, I know that one. Um, 800, 400, 200, but it's such a long track, it's not worth it for the money. You'll definitely, I mean, we'll, we'll, we'll get to trying to win it. This one's a very curious one as well, because you start off in this little, like, side cut. And, uh, you can actually go straight forward along this train track if you want. But you gotta be going fast enough. Because otherwise that happens, and then you realize there's no reverse button in this game. <laughs> yeah, they didn't put a reverse button in. Uh, your opponents will not slow down for you as well. But I love how kind of twisty and windy this is. Uh, unfortunately, it's very twisty and windy. It's also super narrow here. Oh my gosh. Yeah, uh, the chassis might have to come first. Uh, also, watch out, because if you go too far left, you fall backwards in the track. And you're facing the wrong way. Don't worry, they do it twice. It's, it's here as well. It's so cruel. I love it. Oh my gosh, I have... This is what the wing's for, maybe. Because the wing, I think, pushes you down into the ground more. And also shortens your jumps. Which is actually a good thing. This level does have a cool bridge, though. Not the bridge that we were talking about before, but like... Yeah. Uh, I'll leave this at one lap, because I don't think there's any hope getting to, you know, any progress in this, or at least any money. 
But hey, you gotta have a big circuit, and this is uh, definitely a fun, spectacular one. You got your saving grace kind of part at the end here, where uh, the corners are nice and wide. Is your start-finish line totally not where you started before. Uh, you could take the train route again, or you could go down the, this little bit. It's actually a little side cut as well, which is where we dropped off, but it's better to take the road. Yeah, I'm not going to catch up in the first place though, so we'll just stop it there. <laughs> we'll try Big Dome again. We'll try it again. Because I'm on a roll, I'm getting some money. This might be worth it. This might be, you know, where we get a bit, a bit more dosh. Gosh, oh! <laughs> now I know how Max Verstappen feels like with old tires. Dude, shout out to Max Verstappen, by the way. Not only winning the Emola Grand Prix, which was kind of... The Grand Prix itself was kind of dull, and it's not because Max won, because I know some people say that, but it's like... No, it's because, like, nothing really happened. And not even the, the, like, lack of safety cars that we were promised commentators, but, uh, more just, like... There really wasn't any drama going on. Or like insane overtakes. There were a few, but not a ton. But shout out to Max after qualifying. His uh, his sim team, uh, what's it called? Redline? Um, was doing a 24 hour Nurburgring event. And uh, like just a sim event. And uh, he hopped on, did a three hour stint after qualifying. And then woke up, did a two hour stint. And then <laughs> went to win the F1. Meanwhile, their team, uh, in, in the GD3 category, uh, they had two cars, so I guess two chances, but, uh, the one specifically Max drove in one. So I'm just like, man, bro's a legend. <laughs> like, won two races on the same day, technically. I mean, you know, it's a team effort, of course, endurance driving. It's not like one person absolutely, like, wins it for everyone, because it, like, if someone can't drive, it's the end. A good driver is someone who, one, is consistent, and two, gets that, like, last little bit of performance. A decent driver does the normal amount. A bad driver drags everyone down so far, it doesn't matter anymore. And, uh, that's, I mean, at least in endurance driving, because it's, it's 24 hours. You need to have the ability to not goof up so hard and, you know, lose, like, so much time. I'm having a much better run on this. Oh, easy. I just, I, my brain didn't even, like, register that I had done another lap already. Nice! Big money! Okay, let's buy the lightweight chassis. You'll see the, the lightweight chassis helps your acceleration just that tiny little bit. But it's, uh, actually kind of worth it in the end. Um, we could probably buy some tires next. There's not too many other things to buy. Let's do another another big dome though. I'm actually curious if I can do this in one. I'm really curious if I can just beat this game in one kind of long sitting. Actually, yeah, I'm curious. Maybe I can make it work. We'll see. Oh, I should probably switch the um <laughs> speedometer and all that. We'll do that next race. Uh, yeah, let's move on to controversy number two, which is, uh, uh, this is, I, I don't know, maybe you can tell exactly what timelines I follow because of, like, this discussion going on, but I don't know, I think it's because this one, this one's not necessarily the seller product, or maybe it is actually. Uh, but there exists a Twitch streamer in Australia whose name, I remember her first name, and I do not remember her surname, because that's the name she goes by on Twitter. She might have an actual handle, I don't know. All I can say is, she's a Valorant player, which means she's stinky stinky doo doo because she uses Colonel Anti Cheat. Nah. <laughs> Real talk, I don't play Valorant, and I don't find it particularly interesting enough to dive into. Someone could say it's like CSGO, but it's better because it's got abilities. And to me, I'm like, yeah, but like, I don't think that really makes it for me. I've, I, like, I've been exhausted by those kinds of games, and I've never found them that great as spectator sports, so... 
for me, this is another outsider perspective looking in. Um, also, I guess I don't watch a lot of like Twitch streamers, I guess in general. So, uh, but uh, anyway, uh, this this woman is uh, she's been playing games uh, as as a Twitch career for um, quite a few years, I guess. Not as many years as me. I'm old. Um, <laughs> nah. But like, uh, like she's been going around for a bit. Um, and uh, as a fellow Australian, although I don't know which part of Australia, if you're from Melbourne, then, you know, we're going to be sworn enemies, apparently. Um, as a fellow Australian, it, you know, props to the hustle. And being Australian is certainly tough, because it means that your hours and the hours of everyone who watches you are always going to be kind of weird. I always stream at a time that makes sense just for me, because I'm at the, you know, I'm at the end of a workday on Monday, and it's usually, like, nothing... No one does anything on a Monday. It's usually, like, oh, work. And for me, it's like, oh, dude, I could, like, just cram all the stuff to do on Monday and then I never have to think about it for the rest of the week because I've done it already and I get a nice smooth weekend where I don't like no, I, I don't spend time on the weekend working it's just a long Monday is is streaming really working for me not really you got to do a couple of things you gotta you know make sure you've got your stream title and your you know what game you're playing all prepped a couple of topics that you can bring up in the middle of the stream, uh, but it's not too bad. Um, anyway, this woman's playing Valorant, and she's played Valorant tons of times before, um, and uh, she posts a video, or she posts a tweet saying, this kind of behavior is like super, uh, I'm not quoting because I don't have the tweet up, but she basically goes, this kind of behavior is super abhorrent, with a video of a, uh, a person in the chat who uh, mentions a verb that I cannot say because it's super controversial, but it's a, uh, it's an unwanted, uh, activity, I guess, uh, if I describe it like that, and I should probably leave it at that. Um, certainly it's a, you know, it's like, you wouldn't say it to your mum. Just say that. Um, and, uh, and yeah, he's, he's, he says that, and she goes, oh, are you saying you want to, like, this to me? And he says, well, you're on the right path. Like, he's got, like, this very, very, like, Western Sydney, um, I'm gonna say Bogan, but not in the drug tree way, but, like, you know what I mean? Like, just, like, that kind of, like, going for it. Also, he's very loud and clipping on his mic, so he's probably got, like, a headset mic that's very, very close. Um, which is, is, is fine, because it's like, well, you know, I'd rather be heard than not heard. Um, but, uh... But yeah, oh, we are laughing so many fools. Yeah, no. I'm a god when it comes to this track now. We've got it, we've got it hands down, we're good. Uh, she gets very, very upset and, uh, opens up Task Manager with Control Shift Escape. Um, and then exits out of the game and then has a follow-up tweet saying, Oh, I got a 72 hour ban because of this. Thanks, Valorant. Thanks, Riot Games. Uh, we can equip the off-road tires, by the way. Did I say I was gonna switch the, um... The dials, and I didn't, so there you go. Um, let's equip the off-road tires. Now, these tires, you can see, road grip switches. Depending on your track... Uh, I like how I equip the wrong ones. Um, depending on the track you're on... Different tire may actually be life or death. Um, for example, the, uh, the, the, the next track has, uh, mostly on-road. But, uh, if you ever fall off, it's like, oh, This one's probably a little harder to even gauge what you're, what you're going, but you do have a very nice big number for your speed. And that actually might make it way more useful at the end of the day. And there's your horn. Ah! We're good, we're good, I didn't drift the heck out. But your grip is so good, like, you're seeing how well I'm taking this corners now. Because grip affects your turning speed for some reason. I don't think it's your stickiness, but it definitely affects your turning speed, so... I like how many, like, if, if anyone ever sees me playing most racing games, I usually play on automatic transmission, just because I don't think about transmission too much. And then it's like, here's Choro Q. A game that forces me into thinking about gears. And I'm like, it just comes so naturally. Like, I don't know, there's something wrong with me. 
Uh, I do not own a car, but when I do, it's gonna be a manual because it's like 2,000 bucks more Australian for like lots of automatic transmission cars compared to the manual. Um, I like seeing reports going like, oh, you know, manual cars are on the, like, they're going away. Not going away, but it's like they're, they're in low demand. I'm like, bruh, bruh, get good, man. Learn the stick. Because, uh, because, <laughs> like, just give yourself some time with it. Also, it means your car is less likely to be stolen. At least successfully stolen. <laughs> Gonna try their best, but they do not know how to work the stick. I mean, there's definitely thieves that know how to drive manual, but you know what I mean. Um, anyway, so this, uh, this lady also uh, says the F word in a tweet to riot and calls them complicit because, or if they don't act on anything. And honestly, I haven't seen a response, so I've got no idea if like Riot Games even like saw this. Um, but. Uh, there's a handful of things to note, because, uh, clearly, everything I described is certainly, other than, I guess, like, her reaction. But you could definitely say, hey, someone saying, I want to, you know, this thing you, that's not on. Sure. But then it's also, well, first of all, uh, like, pressuring Riot Games to do something about it is, like, okay? Like, you're asking them to, like, just... Well, well, actually, no, you're, you're asking the mob to lean into this one. I guess that's a thing. There's a reason why you're seeing this as a tweet and not a report. Because it would have been very easy as a report. I think there's in-game reporting. You could totally just private message right as well. Uh, they have lots of official channels for this. Um, I could probably make a tweet uh, of a similar scenario. Like, I've had, you know, I've played online games where, you know, crap like this happens all the time. And, like, yeah, like, uh, I don't really think I gain much from, like, sending a vocal message towards, um, their Twitter. Because that's, like, the Twitter person. They probably have a lot of people managing the Twitter. And some of them are probably, like, support staff. They know how to redirect this. But it's, like, I don't know. It's not, it's not, it's not the, 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 the pigeonhole. It's not the, the box you have to put community reports to. Uh, unless you want to drum up a ton of attention to either get change to happen or, slightly more importantly, you have a Twitch career. Also, you were losing the game anyways. Also, uh, like for reference, yeah, it was 1-3, but watch the game again and you'll notice she's not doing great. Not in this game. That's not to say she's a bad player. I've seen some people say she dropped off hard and I really have no idea about any of her past stuff. But I certainly know about this actual game, which she deleted the VOD. She deleted all of her VODs, um, that she had up. Uh, cause this happened recently. Twitch should at least keep your VOD for one week. Or even better, cause she's a Twitch partner. 60 days. But, no, no, they're all gone. Just kinda curious. But, uh, fortunately, uh, she didn't act fast enough for the internet. I am flying. And stuck. What a tragic way for this to go. Oh, I've redeemed it. But have I redeemed it enough? Oh, the turning. Nah, I haven't redeemed it enough to win. Or maybe I have, because I can go. Heck yeah. Redeemed it. <laughs> oh, that, that could have been terrible. We're going for the wing, by the way, uh, even though I haven't bought the, um, the racing tires. Actually, I should probably buy the racing tires at some point as well, but I do want to get the, the big wing, because the big wing is going to help. Big wing, off the road racing, which is only one more race away. And then, like, two more races for, <laughs> for, the, for the wheels. Um, so we're almost there. Uh, yeah, so anyway, if you watch the whole stream VOD, or at least for the match, she gets into a match with this one guy. This one guy, uh, whose name in game is I Miss Her, which is a great name. Um, some people also notice she was in a game with this guy a month ago on stream, and uh, nothing really happened out of it. Um, but the guy started off, and he was kind of loud in his mic. Just like, you know, making lots of noise. He was not playing mariachi music, though. That's a very missed opportunity. If you want to be, you know, a practical 
Joker in competitive games. First of all, don't do it in competitive modes. It's just like... Some people spend... Like, okay. For me personally, when I used to play like competitive modes in games, I'd get very salty. And in particular, I'd actually kind of yell at my friends a lot. Because I don't have all the time to like do stuff. But the game really, really incentivizes. Oh, you know, if you hit this rank, then you'll get all these wonderful rewards. So there's this big FOMO when you're not getting, like, your competitive rank rewards. And then when you're trying to queue with friends, and your friends are not, you know, you're just as bad as your friends, but, you know, you don't know what your friends are doing, you think you're doing okay, because in the moment, you usually feel like you're doing the best job. Um, yeah, they... It's... You always get angry at your friends. Um, so in this kind of scenario, uh... You know, like, this guy's kind of being loud and obnoxious. She mutes him. And then unmutes him. Five seconds later. And then proceeds to just... Kind of just hear it out. And then she interacts with the loud mic person. She keeps egging him on a little bit. Saying, like, oh, you know, like... How, how dare you, or stuff like that. And then he says, oh, you're not playing too well. You should be going here. The kind of, like constructive but sometimes unwarranted feedback you get in competitive games where like you feel like you're doing a good job and you know that you could pull off something good but someone thinks that your job could be done better um and they might be right i have no idea sometimes they had they are right sometimes they're not you can't see any improvement on this by the way but trust me it's it's there when we do the mountain pass again uh, in two more races once I get the, the wheels. This is my only gripe with this game, and this one game in particular. The grind for getting parts is very, very explicit. Because it's just like, oh, like, you know, the parts are there. But, um, hopefully when we go over the bumps, the amount of airtime I actually have, and actually even the big jump, the amount of airtime I'll have is actually like way less. Which is gonna be good. Yeah, you see? Like, you're going right over that curve. There you go, your traction's a bit better. The wing helps. Even when it statistically doesn't say anything, the wing does help. Love this, like, sign as well in the background. Dude, this track this track is like a great aesthetic. I love it. All these tracks are great aesthetics. I love them. Keep reminding you to turn anti-clockwise because of this very, very janky in inside loop. This is weird jump. It look it looks like a shortcut, but trust me, that's just that's just what they want you to do. And they got flying egg balloon things. You know. Uh, but yeah, she then starts to take the fight back. She starts flinging sort of the same thing. I don't think she hurls any, like, verbal insults or anything, but she keeps egging this guy on. He keep she keeps saying, oh, what are you going to do about it? Like, that kind of, like, you know, her playing bad and stuff like that. She also starts doing fake call-outs. So she's already accepted, she even says as well, this game is a lost cause. She also audibly says, I'm not muting this guy for content. And this starts to remove the sympathy. Because if you're going to complain about a guy being abusive and saying some incredibly bad things, you already saying you're not going to mute this guy and also, like... Yeah, like, you've had all the opportunity to, like, stop getting abused. So, like, once, you know, something kind of, like, more abhorrent comes out, like, I don't know, you could have just muted him ages ago, like you did right when the match started, and then you unmuted him for content. It sort of seems to me like you're just doing this for content. You've sort of farmed, or not farmed, but like you've, you've, you've found a, a, uh, a touchy point that you can get a lot of Twitter traffic on. And uh, this has introduced a lot of people to suddenly watch your streams. And if it wasn't for the part, for the fact that it sort of backfired in some way, a lot of people are sort of saying, oh, how dare you? Kind of 
rubbing your name in a bit in the dirt. Um, you know, this could have been good for sponsors and ad money and that kind of stuff. Now it kind of seems, you know, people kind of think you're a bit fraudulent. You're sort of stoking up some controversy just to get some traffic. But to me, I think that's a real simple sentence that I think sums up this whole situation. Uh, Valorant players are Valorant players. People, and, and this is not a specifically Valorant problem, although a lot of people love saying, oh, my game community is so much better. But, like, legitimately, any game with ranked multiplayer always devolves into this. It was like this in Overwatch. It was like this in Counter-Strike. It was like this in what other ranked game do I play? People got salty in Rocket League. Rocket League. I was a god at Snow Day. I would get, like, high diamond. Which is not like the most amazing. I know some people are going to go, it's a ton more ranked more. Also, it's Snow Day. Does it really matter? Not really. But, Snow, that's the whole point. Snow Day is such a funky mode. And I was good at it. And I, I, I enjoyed it. I actually really did enjoy Snow Day as well because Snow Day has the most solo flex potential. Because a lot of these other games, like um, Counter Strike and stuff, if you have two people shooting at you, you're, you're gonna struggle. A lot of people are gonna go after you like that. I sort of max out everything. I can get the, the high speed, maybe. Maybe I could grab that in a bit, but we should be good to uh, equip the racing tires and have a crack at uh, Mountain Pass. Finally, we'll get we'll get some points now. Um, you'll definitely feel the, um, the grip as well compared to the all-round tires. The all-round tires are good for what they are, but you'll certainly feel this grip can uh, kick in very, very nicely. Like one, also, your acceleration sort of helps out. This is what I mean by this is... Actually, is this off-road? Not yet. Oh, we did it! Cool. <laughs> it helps a little bit. It helps a little bit, but not a, not a ton. Also, you got these jumps here. But, yeah, these tires, it's like... You don't skid very easily as well. And the wing helps stick you to the road so you can easily turn around here without bouncing too hard. You definitely keep up a fair bit. What is it with can- oh, oh, okay. What is it with canyons and red skies? Is this like a typical canyon thing? Is it like dust makes the sky red? Reminds me of a uh, Sydney 2009. Shout out to anyone who remembers that one. That was fun. Actually, didn't it happen in, um, happened somewhere else. In some, like, US, uh, city. Where it was, like, the sand, uh, got blown in by the wind, and it was, like, uh, <laughs> Terrible to be outside during that. And then terrible to be in the city for the days afterwards, because everything's covered in it. Yeah, look at that. We're, we're breezing. Good thing I got these tires, man. These tires. That fastest lap. Uh, if you're doing the retro achievement set, it's probably a good idea to go back and get first place on these other tracks. But uh, this is—if you're playing this game like just casually for funsies and don't have retro achievements, there is absolutely no incentive or reward to go back for like any of these older tracks. The whole point of the game is you want to win the Grand Prix. That's it. It's actually a very straightforward retro achievement set because really, he's kind of inventing challenges. He's like, okay, well, you do the Grand Prix and you win every race, or you do the Grand Prix and uh, you uh, uh, well, I guess that basically, you you win the individual races. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I'm probably a bit critical of this uh, the streamer um woman because she's uh. Like, one, I guess that's the grander social stigma of, you know, gaming is not a safe place for, for women, because there's going to be people who say trash like that, but then it's also like, he's just a guy on the internet. Does it really matter? Do my opinions matter? No. Like, none of this ever matters. Um, once, once it really seems like a threat, if he's reading out your address, or any kind of public information about you, also it's only two laps. At least it's a quicker race. Loads of money, but it's not as quick as uh, you know, a 
other ones. Given that there's only two tracks, I might as well just have a crack at like going back for these as well. And you'll see how good the newer parts are as well. I am shocked that I was coming first in quite a few of those. Okay. The first race of the game, but now with parts. Look at that. <laughs> the AI, by the way, are tuned for a certain, you know, difficulty. So, uh... I'm probably going to lap some fools. I'll we'll just say that. Um, also, on top of that, you know, this this lady is uh, is Australian. And for me, it's like, I don't want Australians to be viewed as, like, kind of thin-skinned. Uh, in, in the sense of, like, we can't take the insults that apparently we were notorious for giving everyone. Um... But yeah, like, legitimately, I think every online lobby, really, in of all time, has kind of been like that. Like, you know, uh, I, I can't really think of that many competitive lobbies that are like that. Once it's more casual, and it's just like, you know, like a TF2 lobby, or a Quake 3 lobby, people just play, they get, they get the, the, the kills, they try to improve, you know, it's a pretty natural effort, and, and everyone sort of in the same boat of, hey, I want to self-improve. I want to try and get better. Sometimes people get angry, because at some point, you start to think that, well, not, not, it could happen to you, but at some point, it's like, the improvement can't come from the self. It's like the opponent is doing something cheap, or something hacky, or the game sucks, and one, if the game really sucks, just quit. Because, like, it's not, well, I guess newer games actually try to cater towards casual players sometimes, and update themselves and all that, but like when it was all the games, it was like the game is the game. If you if you wanna have pe if you wanna knock people down, you know that's uh that's on you I guess. Play play by their rules. Don't don't try to invent your own, own rules and say, oh it's cheap when they play by better rules. It's like nah man. Just just get good, you know. I say that as someone who went through it. Oh the frame rate on the speedometer. <laughs> because there's no one in front of me, that's why. I should probably ride a high speed as well. But yeah, it's like, so grippy. Love it. Um... Yeah. Other than that though, uh, this is a very, um... What's the term? Seashell on the shore kind of story, if that makes sense. It's like, you'll probably see this story a bunch of times, but if you've never go, if you don't go to the beach often, you'll be wowed by the first time you see it, if that makes sense. That, that, I don't know, that's, that's, I'm gonna coin that analogy, but like, you know, or, or a metaphor, you know what I mean? Where it's like, there are tons of cases of, you know, verbal harassment and whatever on online and if it's just like in an anonymous game lobby it's just people are gonna say like crap and that's it you know, move on you move on possibly as well uh you know if you could uh surrender the game uh and get over them done with quicker but if you're gonna participate in you know the insult hurling and the bad behavior well okay well it's a 5v5 fight and now you've got two obnoxious players on the team. The other three people having to deal with both of you. You know, it's kind of unfair. If it was just a two on two, you know, I can completely get why, you know, oh, okay, I'm being dragged down by someone. But like, when it's five on five, I don't know. And yeah, is it a waste of time when your elo goes down because of poor matchmaking like this? Yeah. I think it just comes with the turf of playing with pubs playing, I guess, with anyone in general. I don't know. That's sort of why I stepped out of that, because when it comes to a single-player game, I've got no one to blame but myself. Or if the game is actually really stupid, but usually it's myself, because most games can be beaten. Most games have a, have a, you know, they have a trick, they have a, a strategy. And all it takes is learning the strategy and learning the execution. Like, almost getting that, that happen right. Oh, we are totally about to lap some fools. 
I love this upgrade system because it totally gives you that like pride and <laughs> pride and accomplishment. You're you're like uh, I'm winning this race by pure merit, totally by pure merit, pure skill. But I I, I do like how it's like oh you gotta kind of work your way up for that. There we go. Nice and smooth win. We even got a sub one minute lap time. Very nice. Uh, so let's hit the save. I'm going to drop a save right there. So now you can see I've driven 69 miles. It's nowhere near as far as the other one. We, after finishing all seven races, uh, just in the top three, you don't have to actually win them, but you could be like me and flex like that. We now have unlocked the World Grand Prix. The World Grand Prix is a step through every single track. But now, with some slightly harder AI, um, you also have the ability to save between every race, so if you're ever uncertain about what to do, just save between every race, like, there's no, there's no harm there. Um, we'll certainly be up against, uh, some better drivers, but, uh, with the best upgrades, you should have a decent time going at it. And also, since it's a cup, uh, you don't necessarily have to be first place every time, you just have to generally do okay. I think it's also very forgiving the number of points you get for coming second. Like, I'm pretty sure it's like 87654321100. I'm pretty sure it's like very, very good. I love the Stratos. I love the paint color on that. It's great. Alright, I think actually this first track's probably the toughest because there's not like the easiest corner to like snag and overtake. It's like, no, nope, you just gotta just gotta like kind of get in there. That's because I didn't buy the high speed. That's what's going on here. All right, we're gonna have to fight for this one because I don't have the high speed. Oh, come on! I'm setting lap records all over the shop. There we go. <laughs> the first corner is my love, as well as also someone going very, very wide. But yeah, I mean, you can see me, like, maxing out my speedometer. This totally calls for... I should probably have the high speed. I love this crane as well. It's just there. Whoa! I'm pretty sure it was 876. If it's 10, 9, 8, 7... If it starts from 10, it's just... Oh my gosh, easy points for everyone. Also, a thousand gold every time, so, uh... But it, you're probably also not going to come first if you... Oh, it's seven, six. Okay. Still, still. Okay, there we go. Let's actually buy the, uh, the, the high speed. Let's actually use it. Um, so yeah, we have all these other parts that are not as good, just kind of chilling there. So I'm not going to buy... Oh, maybe engine three at some point. That's the only thing I didn't actually get. Um... And, uh, that is here. So, you see, it does drop the acceleration just that little bit. But I, I think it's worth it, given your top speed. Uh, I'm going to save between every single one of these races, because, uh, you never know. But we'll probably be okay. Woodland, you know what that means? We've got to switch to the, uh, to the uh, off-road tires on this one. Otherwise, we should be pretty okay. Yeah. Um, I got a, a third topic. Also, this is not that second track, by the way. You thought it was going to be the second track? No, it's the one I suck at. Ironically, I'd probably say this is one where maybe better acceleration actually would be better. Because uh, if you ever dink the wall, you know, you can at least accelerate a little faster. But they're pretty close. It's not too bad. I'm going to aim for that tree every time. That seems to work. Now, if only the first lap was not, like, a standing start lap, and you could actually have a good, like, lap time based on it. Skyline boys, am I right? Oh, oh. It's kind of close, but so. <laughs> um, so yeah, uh, so one last topic for the day, um, as a big topic, uh... 
I, for some odd reason, on my last, um, both the, the stream alert and, uh, the VOD update, I tweet these out as well. That's pretty much the only time I ever use Twitter. So if you're on Twitter, you'll see those. But, uh, yeah, sometimes I reply to people on the Fetty, but uh, I'm not, I, I don't check my Twitter. I, I know I say, oh, like there's other Twitters. I'm using Knitter, I'm not logged in, I don't see anything. Which also means I'm following people that don't show up on my public profile. Because people judge that for some reason. No one judges it on the Fetty. You can, you can see the crazy people I follow on the Fetty. But you can't, like, you don't know the people I look at on Twitter. I don't know. Um, but yet, I got, like, a lot of people, a lot of people like and comment and what, shout out to one person who just gave me an act out of nowhere. But what unites all of these people is all of them are artists. All of them probably do work for like either commissioning art or um, you know like stream overlays or stream stuff. I've, I've had like some discord like messages as well. Cold call out of the blue going hi how you doing? I'm like I'm okay. They're like hi yeah. Um, would you like to commission some art? And I have to tell them it's like, like, I'm simultaneously in a position where, like, I like their art, I guess, but not in a way that, like, one, I don't know of them beforehand, but also not in a, like, I would go out and buy it kind of sense. I don't know. I'm, I'm a very, like, kind of free consumer in the same sense that I don't ask people for any money for anything I do. Uh, tunnel long. You know what that means? We go to the racing tires. Also, tunnel long. Ooh. Did you did you catch that one? This is not the same track. I know, right? This is this is what blew my mind. It's like suddenly it's like the Grand Prix is introducing layouts of tracks that you haven't seen before. You've got to accommodate. You've got to you've got to adjust. And that's why this game keeps getting cooler because what a what a wacky like, ah, oh yeah, you know. So it looks normal at first. We've still got this same kind of thing, and even we've got uh, this uh, hairpin going on in a moment. But this hairpin is slightly different. So we'll slow down. Now you can actually kind of step out into the other lane, and uh, the main route is now blocked off. You've got to follow this other lane. It's kind of narrow, so take it a bit chill here. We're underwater, despite the fact that we are at the exact same height level as the other window on the other side. And then this uh, turns right a bit, and then it joins back right here. And then uh, it's smooth sailing from here on out. It's longer, but it's not like tons longer. There's there's another like fork there. You'll never see what's on the inside there. I don't know what's there. Um, the same rules apply to this jump. It's a little longer, but it's uh, arguably it's a little easier on that hairpin because you've got a wider exit. And, uh, given that you've got your upgrades by this point, right? Right? <laughs> Shout out to whoever can beat this with the worst upgrades imaginable. Because, uh, I'm not that good. And neither did the Retro Achievement Set try to punish anyone for- or push anyone to doing that. But it's a lot easier to nail, like, that when you've got a wider exit. I don't know. So, um... Yeah, I, like, I'll just get cold called by these artists. Um, yeah, for, for me personally, I don't, like, I've never really asked for, or, like, funded any commissions of anything, so I've really got no clue about the process, or really how much I think art is worth. Um, I'm just of the opinion that, like, yeah, people make stuff on the internet, um, and, uh, it's cool. I completely get that some people want to do this for a living, which means it stops being, you know, I want to make cool stuff for other people, and starts being... I want to make sure people pay me for making cool stuff all the time because I'm spending my entire livelihood on it. Uh, I've definitely spent money on streaming equipment and other kinds of things that I do for hobbies and potentially might turn into, you know, uh, paid hobbies, but not careers yet. I have a job, my job pays well, I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave it at that. Um, it's so weird, like, just side note, it's, it's so weird a part of me that's like, I upload like, you, to YouTube, like, actually 17 years ago at this point. So it's weird for me to say, like, oh, you know, like, I've got a good paying job and, like, 
done all my education and stuff like that. Like, there's a part of me that's like, I'm old, I've got creaky legs. Like... Like... <laughs> there, there's totally things that... I, I'm at that point where it's like, I will never be able to do that in my life now. Um, and not just like things like, I'll never be able to be a child actor, but more like, I'll, I'll never be an actual actor, right? <laughs> like that kind of stuff. This is how to, how to get this conversation about artists into some kind of existentialism. Um, but on the other hand, I'm happy with the things that I am good at, and I think there is still potential for um, learning and really picking up some more things. Music, produ music production is still on the radar. I really want to get that out of the way. Um, we'll save again. I think it's seven races. Seven seems like the right number. So again, there we're on race four. Uh, we now have Highlands Long. You know what that means? Back to the off-road tires. Um, again, Long, thousand five hundred, two hundred. I could probably buy like the car body of my dreams at this point. All right. So what does Highlands Long look like? Uh, I believe it's got. Uh, just one long side cut and you'll certainly see it coming. Look at that, there it is. Instead of going left, you go right. Uh, it's got a twi it's got another hairpin. This one catches all the AI out for some reason, I don't know why. Other than that, I think it's just kind of windy. I don't think there's really anything. Oh, you've kind of got a chicane here. Just crash, crash, everything's crashing. Um, this corner's a little iffy. Oh, another chicane, okay. Oops. And this is where it joins onto. Which is also right before this chicane. So, <laughs> Definitely longer, not exactly any, like, trickier, I'd say. It's just, it's just more of the same kind of track. If anything as well, I'd probably say it's just as straightforward as, uh, the original in the sense of like you can certainly make a, a good lead for yourself so I probably said this is again one of the easier ones um, but yeah so now I don't understand where all these artists came from I assume it's because I said the word twitch or I used a twitch link um, so it probably just struck a lot of people thinking oh I'm I guess I'm a vtuber or I, I I'm a streamer and I need art assets um, so uh, first of all, disclaimer for any artist, I do not, I'm not seeking anything. If you want to be cool and draw stuff, cool. Do not expect me to pay for that just because you did it. Because I know some people are gonna, like, some people try to do that. They actually extort people for, like, saying, oh, you, but you, like, said this idea and I did it. Therefore, you must pay me. No, that's not how this works. At all. Um, and then secondly, on top of that, like, I'm not seeking out anyone for any... Uh, like, I, one, I, d I don't, like, my, my chat sidebar is two, two rectangles. The, s the sprite of the Munchlax I just took from a Cerebi.net, which took it from a Koro Koro magazine, which they may have recreated from scratch. Um, I'm not sure if it's a scan or whether they actually, like, made it again, because it's too clean a sprite, and it wasn't in any games. So I don't know, but, uh, that's all. I do my own avatars as well. Like right now, I have the politic, uh, the polygonal Munchlax avatar. I did that myself. Uh, I'd had the fisherman Munchlax. I had the the Monopoly top out of monocle. Oh, actually, no monocle. I've just got the mustache. Don't I? Yeah. Um, like I, I just draw all these myself and paint. Except for, except for the 3D one. That was in Blender. But, like, that's it. Um, but, like, I don't know. I just do all that myself. I just... Uh, I don't spend too much time on it. It's just something fun and quirky. That's it. Um, I really want to, like, fancify my actual extreme, like, you know, graphics and stuff. But I feel like there's a part of me that's... One, I don't know how to convince a person to do it exactly the way I want them to do it. I really don't want them to iterate so many times that it costs me and them in time, um, like, so much. I don't think that's worth it. Um, and I also, like, I don't think it's really worth it for me in, in general as well. Like, just the, the, the cost of, do of making art anyway. I'm just like, ah, uh, yeah, like, I just do it myself. You know, that's kind of my mentality. 
not, uh, not, not with everything, but certainly this is like one where I'm not too fussed if I just do it myself. So, to race number five, it's just mountain pass. It's, it's just regular old mountain pass. There's no extra cuts. It's mountain pass. Uh, and of course, two lap or lap two. Uh, but yeah, no, I did get quite a bunch of followers out of like nowhere. Uh, Twitter followers, I do not care about. Like, if you follow me on Twitter, in the same way as I just said, like, you know, you know exactly what you're in for because all I post is stream alerts and stuff like that. Oh, pain and suffering are my middle name. And the worst part, no retry button. Oh, <laughs> that, you can actually tell the, uh, the whole of Mirrors effect. Okay, in that case, we just gotta catch up. Oh boy, that's gonna be a catch up and a half. Yeah, okay, let's, uh, so if you retire, you know what happens there. Uh, but you know what you can do? You can save and exit, and then you can just say, actually, don't ex don't save, just exit, and then you go back to the main menu, and you can hit X twice real quick, and you can load from... That's not even from the memory card, I'm pretty sure that's just, like, in RAM, in RAM very quick. Okay, let's just not do the shortcut, let's just take it normally. Because if you take it normally, you'll probably win this one. Yeah, like, where did it all come? And it's exclusively Twitter, although I, I said not taking the shortcut and I proceeded to take the shortcut. But I did it this time, so it doesn't matter. So easy to nudge that wall on the first go. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know where, where they really all came from. And like, I, some of them may have been bots, but I don't think all of them, one of them especially, um, and you know who you are, and if you actually watch my stuff, then uh, actually, hi, I don't, I don't want to call you out like this, but like, legit, like, you found me in a crowd of people who, like, it's, uh, like, I, oh, no, life is over, my life is over, my life is over, you know, I could probably actually, like, skip that one and still, like, kind of do it, but I do want to flex and get, like, all the, all the points, come on, I gotta put in the effort and actually, like, nail it. Kind of decently long loading screen. I've seen quicker, but I've certainly seen slower. Ah, oh, it's the end of the world when you fall off. It's the end of the world here as well. At least I'm facing the right way so I can recover a bit better. Let's go! I like when people complain about rubber banding and then you get games like this where, like, I'm very certain the AI go at the same speed, no matter what you're doing. The wing, it does nothing! <laughs> Look at this chump. Back marker right here. There you go. Not the end of the world. I love that like fountain on the fountain, waterfall on the left. It's pretty neat. We're good. We're good. Look at that, it's the, the front of the pack. They all stuck together. I love how just like you hit someone, it's just like hard shove, hard shove, you just car moves to the side competes with the, you know, the guy next to you in the wall. Actually, it does move both of you at least, so it's not like you can truly get like that jammed still. Um, yeah, and, and this always, this always like, I know a lot of people like keep joking about or joking and or catastrophizing about the, the dead internet theory. Um, but stuff like this really like gets me kind of boggles the noggin because it's just like, 
I always worry that like there's people on the internet who act like bots. Uh, not necessarily that these people are, or well, maybe maybe some of them are, but uh, it's just like, man, you know, like I I have never been put in a position where I need to like ask people I've never talked to before if they're even interested in my market to the point that they'd give me money. I mean, you gotta do it, I guess. Like, you're not gonna make it. You're not gonna make enough money unless you go viral. And once you go viral, then I guess you don't have to ask anyone ever, ever again. <laughs> but until then, it's like, you know, people don't know you exist. How do you get your foot off the ground? And also, you're competing in a global market of... I, legitimately, there's probably a million artists on the internet. And you're one of them. And you got to somehow stand out. How do you stand out? I don't know. I'm not, I'm not an artist. I'm also not someone who's really stood out. But I am happy to all the people who do tune in to the streams and the VODs each week. Unless you're not a repeat watcher, in which case you might only watch one, in which case uh, I do lots of lots of retro games, so <laughs> sometimes the game is up your alley and sometimes it's not. That's okay. That's the whole point of a retro rotation. You just play whatever. And you experience lots of fun games, so. And lots of weird things. Like, you may not have even known that this game exists. Back to the off-road, because it's just it's just the big dome. Oh, I should have bought a different car. We'll do it, we'll do it after the Grand Prix. Which is wink wink nudge nudge there's a little more after that. Now I am a big dome king, because I got stuck and I still won, so. But these guys are more intense than the quick play variety. Think about it, you only win a thousand gold from winning each one of these races. And it was 700 before. I'm pretty sure, like, the 700 for the Big Dome is actually, like, quicker than most of the other races in this Grand Prix. This is probably the King one, because you'll get a thousand if you win this. It's constant shoving. But there's no way you can come back to this race unless you do the whole Grand Prix again. By the way, if you lose the Grand Prix, if you don't come... I don't know if top three is the goal or first is the goal. Um, I haven't tried, uh, but if you if you definitely come fourth or lower, it just goes back to race one. Start again, reset the scores, do better. Um, a lot of other games definitely have like either more tracks or more. Oh man. This is, I'm, I'm a little bit like, oh, oh, I'm, I'm falling too far behind here. Oh, I can do that last corner okay, but I still gotta nail past four people when I was actually like ahead of them before. All right, let's let's try and do this bit much cleaner than I did before. There we go. There we go. Wheel it around. There we go. All good. Oh, you were worried I wasn't gonna win it. Unless you went. <laughs> well, I think this is a slam dunk no matter what happens, but... Come on, you gotta flex. You gotta do the final round. And what kind of final round would it be without, you know, a makeover... Obviously, we gotta go. I'm actually I'm a I'm a Lancer Evo guy. We gotta go Dandelion Yellow, Lancer Evo. Uh, technically the bodies are called just body. It's kind of <laughs> it's really weird. Um, the starting bodies you can't get more of. Um, as well. But uh, let's see. We've got three different paint trims where you can do one color or two colors. Look at that, that's delish. That is a delish yellow right there. And you can rename as well, so... I gotta save my damn line yellow. It's too good. It's too good. And, uh, well, it's the normal circuit hard. That's the last one. Which we've done before, so... 
Everyone likes a good dandelion yellow Evo, right? I'm actually a sucker for like bright yellow cars, I don't know. I'm not sure if they're gonna go like crazy aggressive on me. Probably not, because I was winning this one pretty straightforward. Grass is always fun though when you're on the when you're on the all-rounder tires it's not too bad but when you, once you get to the to the road tires it's like the off-road is a little killer if you try turning on it. Because now you're gonna see that I actually have to do this corner properly, but it's it's also you can take it so much tighter than you could have before. Um, we've done this track before. That's right, there were only uh, two tracks with ultimate layouts, but still. I don't know, I like it, it's fun. I'd say this is a decent, like, amount of tracks, though. You could say the variety maybe is a little lacking, because two of them are just, like, road circuits and, uh... Hill, like, dirt. Dirt. Dirt road, mountain road, tunnel. Like, you, you might make the case, oh, you know, maybe it's a bit you know, stock standard, but I guess another thing to do is uh, remembering the, the context of when this came out. Uh, so I guess this is 1996, which is, um, is approaching the middle of the PS1 lifespan, but um, like approaching the middle in the sense of like, you know, games are made specifically to leverage the PS1's very, <laughs> very competent 3D art style. It was sort of something where I was like, oh, like, some games like Ridge Racer uh, existed, and a lot of PS1 games were still 2D games. And then it was like, oh my gosh, we can actually do 3D games that don't look like butt uh, in the home. And uh, a lot of people dove straight into it. Um, in turn, I think that leads into a rather charming PS1 art style. Like, none of this stuff is like shaded like a, you know, any kind of PS2 game would normally do. Everything is all flat colored. Like, there's no shat- there's one shadow under the car, that's it. The entire track is all the same color. You can only tell it's a hill because the texture is moving, and not because there's an actual, like, shadow or radiant or anything. But yet it works! Your brain somehow knows. It can feel the sense of speed, it can, you know, gauge perspective. I think there's something to it where... That's what the simple art style is. Also, that blimp is nowhere... That it's like three meters above the track, and it's three meters long. And the crowd is just like a flat wall. But man, there's something great about that. There's something super charming. About that kind of stuff. I love it. I really like it. And with that, I am a champion. And I broke a lap record. Cool. Yeah. Thank you, body number 24 is the winner. So with that, we have now reached... Oh my gosh, that's a background texture. Congratulations! We did it, we hit the credits. But this is not the end of the game just yet. I actually, I, I was thinking I'd take two streams on this, but... Now I'm like, eh, I don't know, this is probably just dive straight into it. I don't know, we'll see. This is, this is just pure class right here. You don't need higher resolution textures. You could just do this. Easy. Oh, we want to do a blurry, nostalgic background. No. You use a 64 by 64 texture. Actually, this might be 128 by 128. Actually, no, uh... No, it actually might be 64 by 64, yeah. <laughs> it's got wider pixels as well than, like, they're, they're wider than they are taller. You can see that. <laughs> but yeah, no, I, I think I think definitely if you can somehow find a copy of this game, or just, you know, whatever, um, uh, give this one a go. This one's great fun. Penny Races. Um, it's, it goes under a bunch of other names as well, but... Uh, I had a mate who had uh, Charo H, H uh, yeah, Charo H, I can talk, Charo Q HG2 on the PS2, um, otherwise known as Road Trip Adventure. So 
That one's a game. Uh, there's another one called Gadget Races, um, but they're all Char Q games. All all of these games. Some of them got localized. Some of them didn't. Uh, so whichever ones you played would have been all over the shop. Is this? Are these credits? No, oh, I thought they were looping for a moment. Oh, I love this zoom out right here. Blows your mind. This is exactly where I would park my Mitsubishi Lancer if I had one. I'm just grooving, I'm just vibing, it's great. Oh, you thought the song was about to end because you saw an executive producer? Nah, man. It's the music that needs to love. <laughs> I'm not sure if it's the same musician on every single game, but I know that the actual development team changes sometimes. They're like subbing and out just whenever. Thank you so much for playing my game! Fair enough. That's a good one. That's a good one. Okay, now we're back at top menu. Uh, you ever wondered what was in the store? Now you can see. Uh, really, really expensive parts. Oh my gosh. Supreme tire. Supreme chassis. Supreme... <laughs> it's exclusively... <laughs> exclusively... Manual as well, by the way. Um, also we got some horns. Some, uh, bodies. These are just some, some bonus ones as well. And... Supreme Engine. And they cost more as well. And we also have uh, a couple more sprint races, actually. Including, uh, ooh. <laughs> Actual Sakuba Circuit. Uh, so let's see if we can do Snow Mountain. This is, uh, on snow, so... Technically, your off-road tires are still snow. But we might- I might have my butt kicked. I didn't see how much money you got. I think it was 2,000, wasn't it? Uh, there's also another Grand Prix already available. So, uh... You can dive right into more stuff. Uh, this is uh, exactly the same as the short circuit, by the way, for the for this kind of stuff. So, uh, since I'm already okay at it, this should actually be very, very straightforward for me, and easy money then. And it's better than uh, than the big ring. That's not better than the big ring. We're gonna catch up. Oh, we could catch up. Think about it. This game just keeps going. It's the gift that keeps on giving. It's like New Game Plus, I guess. Maybe. Well, it's not really New Game Plus, because it's still just the same game. <laughs> but yeah, we'll see how, uh, how I go, and if uh, this ends up being the next four-hour stream, then oh boy. But one thing I actually kind of love about this game is that I usually don't find driving games to be, like, the best stream content. They're not like, I don't know, like, like I would love to play Gran Turismo, but Gran Turismo requires... Lots of focus, a fair bit of dedication, seeing the same tracks again and again while I'm just taking different cars, or sometimes grinding the same track again and again for a bit more money. This one, I mean, this game still does that a little bit, but, uh, like, I'm only an hour 53 into a stream, and I hit the credits already, so it's not like it was, uh, tons longer. Or any longer, really. I don't know what to buy first, should we buy- because I knew I could actually buy, like, the transmission right off the bat, but I was sort of leaning towards, uh, tires. At the very least, it's like, well, you can win this race after winning anything in the original championship. But the new championship, because there's another championship, and it involves even more insane parts.
I forgot if you have to grind for it in this game. I know in 2 it's actually a very horrendous grind for um, some parts, but uh, we'll, we'll get into that one later. Uh, I'll leave a, I'll, I'll definitely leave a, you know, each of these games as like, oh, you know, we'll experience them at some point. But this one, I don't know, I, I love it. It's great. It's a great kind of entry into it. 1,000, oh, it was 1,000. I thought it said 2,000. What was that? 1,800, Also, this, this actual rendition of Sukuba kicks my butt when I try it. Um, so yeah. Also, this part shop didn't change anything, by the way. It's still the same part shop, so. Uh, also, there's a trade-in feature if you want to, like, sell your old parts that you don't use anymore. Um, but I'm sort of sentimental like that. I don't really like selling them. But yeah, that Supreme Tire, I think we need to work for it. Because the transmission and the... all that, that's pretty straightforward, but the moment... Oh, and the Supreme Engine, yeah. Uh, f for reference as well, do I dare try the... the, um... the Gr World Grand Prix for a hot second? Just to show that, yes, it does indeed kick your butt. So this is, this is going off uh, all the same old parts I would have started the last one on. Other than, I guess I'm a Mitsubishi Lancer this time. Poor Mitsubishi, they, they, do they still do Lancers or no? Hang on, this is no harder. Maybe it is the same, the same Grand Prix. Maybe secretly Sukuba Circuit is the end of the game. Ooh. So then you weigh up in your head is 700 credits for the, uh... For the ring better? No, the answer is constantly starting your, gr your <laughs> Grand Prix again and again to drive on the very short tracks. This one and the ring. That's the secret. I think that actually is the secret, by the way, to getting the money the quickest is to drive this track, because it's half the length of any others, and all of these Grand Prix tracks earn you a thousand gold. You do have to sit through some menus though, that's the only catch. But you certainly aren't going to win the Grand Prix uh, with only two races cleared, so... I think we could do it. I think we could totally, like, commit to the grind. Here we go. Another thousand dollar do- what? in front of me that whole time, what? I don't, I don't know what happened there, but sure. Um, so yeah, uh, good old studless. That's probably for the snow a bit. Um, but yeah, no, we need that supreme tire. I'm gonna get that tire first, man. That tire is gonna, you know, make everything worthwhile. Alright, let's just uh, skip some races that I don't care about. Oh no, I lost. Oh no. Whoa, Black Mary, bam, bam. Again, long race. You know, a part of me is kind of going like, is it actually worth it to sit through, like, skipping the other races, or is it like... I would still say it is. Also, now it's a snowman and long. Which is a technically a form of the track that we would never experience otherwise. And I kind of like this. It's it's almost as if, hear me out, it's as if the season changed. Specifically in this one, this one farm. Mountain part? Nope. Well, I guess, I guess we'll, we'll go through this one. Actually, I guess this one's not too bad because it's only two laps. 
Oh, I just realized the gold is 1500 as well. It's actually like super worth it this time. Okay, let's let's win this one. I'm gonna win this one. Yeah, no, nah, it's actually super worth it to keep winning these. But we'll just take it as it comes. Like if I miss it, I miss it. I'm gonna just be gentle. Let's not take the shortcut. It barely even gets you that much further than anyone else. Oh, I, okay, never mind. I, I realized what was happening. I wasn't winning the 1500. Because look at the look at the map. Someone is powering ahead. I couldn't even see him to start off. That's that's your supreme target right there. That guy. He's probably not like the worst on this track because he's still gonna he's still gonna be gentle on the corners. If I manage to catch up with this guy, I'm gonna be genuinely impressed. Because he's meant to, he's meant to really kick your butt, and I haven't even gotten any of the new parts in our question mark shop of horrors with the spooky music. I believe what this is actually like. They didn't translate it in this. I'm I've caught up to him. Oh. They didn't translate it in this game, but uh, since many of the other Choro Q games didn't get released outside of Japan, they have fan translations, and quite a bunch of them will, uh, instead of saying the supreme parts, they actually refer to them as the demon parts. They're actually, like, demonic parts. Um, and it doesn't help that there's, like, more art and kind of, like, associated stuff to, uh, imply that, yes, these are effectively parts from hell. Um, although, uh, later Choroku games top it off with angel parts to go one step further, but in this game they're called Supreme. So just imagine they're like the, the clothing brand. I might beat this guy. I am surprised that... Well, not, not that right. He was further away though, I might be able to catch up again. As long as I don't keep tapping every wall in sight. What? <laughs> you, gotta, you gotta be gentle on that one, man. That's, that's always terrifying. It's like Choco Mountain vibes. Yeah, look how far for oh, oh, oh. No, we're good. Look how far forward I am compared to like anyone else. Yeah, there's no hope beating this guy on that first track, I tell ya. Alright, he's gonna he's gonna creep up. But I think we're good. I think we're good. I think I managed to actually beat him. <laughs> huh. <laughs> I wasn't expecting to beat him in an actual race, okay. 1500 gold for me! It's better than any singular race. Uh, we could do Big Dome as well, can't we? To the off-roads! He might kick my butt in the Big Dome though, because uh... He's got power steering! Alright, let's watch the map. Let's see him, like, absolutely pull out in front of everyone. There he goes. There he is. There he goes. Bro, this is, like, tragic. There he's... he's already going. Oh, I've done it. I've done the... Silly jump. I've ruined it for all of us. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I guess let's do uh, another Retro Achievement status update. Uh, so, uh, I'm pretty confident I'm at the end of doing the Guitar Hero World Tour set. I've generated achievement icons for all the... Uh, the, the five-star song achievements, not the custom songs yet, I've yet to do those. Um, I've got ones for uh, the, uh, the the ranks, and I've also got ones for the uh, the gigs in the career mode. Um, so that's all good. Uh, next step is, well, the only one that other ones that I've got like lots of achievements for 
is uh, the um, the dual instrument achievements. So doing Vox Tower and stuff on a few songs. I've also thrown in a couple of other uh, songs. I realized I could have done About a Girl and Everlong. Um, because both of them have guitarists that would sing the song. So I might as well. And um, I guess I'll put the achievement count at 598. What is going on over there? See that guy just chilling out on the side? But it's not, uh, it's not the, the, uh, I was, I was like, it's not the, the black driver, but like, you know what I mean, it's not the, it's got black in the name and he's like painted black. And it crossed the line ages ago, so. <laughs> he already knows he can kick my butt. Well, that puts me at a fairly okay amount. Do I dare take a crack at the final Grand Prix? Oh, we, oh, we could give it a go. I like how I didn't do a legitimate attempt on races 2 and 3, and then I was like, yeah, I could, I could have a crack on this. Or 2, 3, and 4, actually. But again, he's probably going to blitz ahead. Like, I don't think he can catch up to that guy. There he goes. He's gone. He's, oh my gosh. Call me DK <laughs> Drift King. Um, so yeah, so uh, so I've got to do th those ones, and I haven't done the um, the custom song achievements. And there's a bunch of miscellaneous ones that I also want to, you know, oh, I need to have achievements for. So that's that. Um, but uh, it's my plan. If I can nail these uh, achievements out, then I can at least upload them all. And all I got to do is then just that to my script uh, all the achievement IDs and stuff so that then I can do updates and it doesn't panic because I named it differently um, so that should be pretty good I'm gonna try and hope for it out by the end of the, the month which means I do one more stream and if it's not out by the stream after that you can grill me also uh, my hunch this is more a hunch than because I don't think anyone's locked it in, is that uh, since they're doing all the work on the GameCube uh, sets on Retro Achievements, there's going to be a whole ton of games that are not the Guitar Hero World Tour on the PS2 available to play soon. Um, so uh, if I don't get this out soon, it's going to get drowned out by a lot of GameCube games. Uh, that's no one's fault but mine for just like not having it out sooner, but um, certainly I don't want to hold it off for any longer. So I'm going to try my best at that. I'm going to do a last minute QA because I think I saw one thing where if you hit the credits of the game, um, it stops detecting that you hit the you rock screen, which probably just means I need like a extra weird edge case for the you rock because that's it. I'm really just detecting that like a certain value reaches a, you know, some arbitrary number. Um, that should be straightforward. Other than kind of annoying to test because PCSX2, multiple updates now over the past like month have broken all save states. I used I, I kept all my save states for SingStar and none of them work anymore and now I am in the exact same boat where I can't do the I just can't hold on to my save states and it's kind of annoying for well it's it's less annoying for Guitar Hero because for SingStar I had to actually like sing the songs I didn't have any mechanism of skipping forward in the progression um but for guitar hero at least there's a bot you can invoke the bot so yeah but it's uh, it's getting there it's uh, certainly been a an interesting set to work on um and definitely one where i'm not used to working with games under scale uh also i guess i gotta do the uh, the full combo subset um at some point and the band subset and then maybe actually three full combo subsets because who's gonna is there any person who can beat hot for teacher both on um on a guitar and there we go back to back to round one we're still a few points off so let's just take another crack at uh getting more money i guess um 
Yeah, I don't know anyone who could do Hopper Teacher on all, all four instruments themselves. I know some people have done, like, like one-man band FCs of, like, various songs. I don't know if they've done the whole game. So, my gut feeling is we probably don't want, like, full combo subsets on all four instruments in the same subset. We'll probably want to split drums and vocals out. But, uh, guitar and bass probably could be the same subset. Subset? I don't know. I'm slurring my speech, that's how you know, it's late in the night. Except it's not late in the night, it's 10.39. I forgot to shift into 5th gear. You know how it do be. I'm actually wondering if I've got, like, a better chance beating this guy if I, like... ...had one of these upgrades <laughs> instead of going straight for the Supreme Wheels first. I'm gonna do the Supreme Engine last, I kinda want the other ones... ...along the way. Get there. Final lap! Well, I mean, we'll get there, but that guy's gone way further ahead, so I can't get in. But, uh, but I've, I've definitely learned some things about working on Guitar Hero World Tour, particularly like these, uh, these makeshift hash maps that they've got. Or hash tables, rather. Although, are they even hash tables? It's like, it's, it's got ON lookup. Where it's like it scans a linked list, tries to find a, a node that has the same hash value, and then it knows that that's the value, and it pulls that. But like, that's a that's a funky way of doing it. I might as well just take a crack. Why not? What's the worst that can happen? I, I quit the race like ten minutes or like <laughs> thirty seconds in. I don't know. If I get second, then cool. But I think you actually do have to come first. I think that's actually the goal. And that makes the retro achievement a little trickier when it's like, then you gotta do this with full points. And you've got Tsukuba circuits in there. And yes, he's 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 flooring it, he's he's gone way ahead. And neither am I, because I'm hitting the wall. Yep, that, that that was the opportunity to, <laughs> to call a new one. Uh, if I go to Sprint Race and uh, we switch to Racing, um, and we'll check out Tsukuba. Well, sorry, it's Special Circuit. Sorry, it's not Tsukuba. It's Special Circuit. It's also not Tsukuba because uh, there's a giant wall to my left instead of a grandstand. But uh, certainly, I think this one's actually a bit harsher than you'd expect. Like, the AI really go for it here. You can kind of catch up. It's, it's really narrow. I don't remember Sakuba being this narrow. Or with a massive wall on my left. It's probably the stop like, having to render too much. Oh, I remember this being way tougher. Oh, it's because there's a black guy. Again. I think it's just like just out of reach when you don't have like a pot. All the other AI, it's not too bad, but this guy, nah, it's pretty bad. I like how they've even modeled the pit lane here, although <laughs> for some reason this is the one that you can't go down. But uh, I like this. This is a fun little special, you know, bonus track. Oh, that's how you definitely lose your chances of catching up, though. Again, the music is a vibe. The m music is such a groove. I don't remember Sakuba having water. I guess there's a part of me that's like this game and maybe this franchise is very, very Japanese. And right off the bat, we have like you know, one <laughs> one of the iconic Japanese circuits. And it's kind of- oh, we've got the double lap time, it's the same lap time. 
There's a part of me that, like, really loves just these old games and a sort of, like, weird love for things you wouldn't expect. Um, there's actually, like, uh, what was the one game? Horizon Chase Turbo? An indie game that's kind of, uh, gives me very Rad Racer Outrun kinds of vibes with its, uh, aesthetic, but, um, it's got a metric butt-ton of track layouts, and a lot of them pay homage to either real-world circuits or occasionally just some... That was a- that was a strong base right there. Just- just bopping, just going. Um, that game's definitely worth a play if, uh, if you've picked it up from a, a freebie on Epic Games before, or it goes cheap on a sale. Oh, I missed it by like... <laughs> Three cents a second, so... Uh, well, I, I got second. But it doesn't pay, does it? Ugh. Okay. <laughs> we can do this, we can beat this guy. But definitely, if you're not beating him in every single... Well, you gotta beat him in four races, and then you gotta come second in, that, in three. Like, if he's absolutely flooring ahead of you, there's nothing you can do about it. Other than to get second and buy the parts, buy the upgrades. Buy my new mixtape, you know? <laughs> I'm not sure if I can catch up to him on this one. Oh my gosh, I actually might. There he is! Hi there! So who have I angered today? I've angered, uh, people who like Assassin's Creed, uh, women, and, uh, uh, artists. I feel like, I feel like my otherwise just, uh, like, I don't know, I, uh, <laughs> I should probably come up with, like, some positive topics from time to time. We're, we're, like, two or three weekends away from Computex and I can just talk about nerdy hardware forever and how people on Reddit are wrong for, uh, still saying that the Intel processors catch fire when it's certainly the motherboard stuff. Um... But, uh, oh, I will say one thing. I'm gonna do a, a mate call out. Uh, I got a mate on another server, and he he picked and bought computer parts without referring to me. My, my divine intervention was not called upon, which meant that his computer is now cursed. It shall not perform as well as he wants it to, but also, um, very, very, like, mm, weird excessive parts um i'm gonna have to judge my man i'm sorry although granted like yeah my computer is just like a, a black rectangular prism with absolutely nothing emitting light inside and it's also got a giant noctua cooler pressed up against the wall well, it's not pressed because otherwise it'd actually be very really bad but it's like <laughs> you know it, it's classic noctua like brown and aluminium like, no frills aluminium, right there. It, like, tarnishes when you touch it. That's how no frills aluminium it is. Um, he's clearly gone for parts that look nice, and uh, even ones where, like, you know, uh, uh, an all-in-one cooler with a screen on it. Certainly very, very nice if you wanted to decorate your case and put something on the screen. Uh, I like max performance, and max performance does not require things that need a screen on it um there's other things like he, he bought a 14700 kf and i mean intel's fine but i'm just like you know if you're just doing it for games 58 7800 x3d 4080 super's good but there's cheaper 4080 supers um obviously they're cooler you don't you really don't need one when you go on a on amd like that look at that 16,000 points you know what that means i can buy the Supreme- I sort of overkill went for it, but sure. Now we can equip the Supreme Titan. Look at the stats! Wah! Wah! This is why, I, by the way, I had 500 miles. You were wondering, like, how'd you get that many? 
But the nice thing about the Supreme tires is now I don't have to switch them off because they're good in both situations. Actually, I think... Yeah, no, they're good in both situations. Um, I think in the second game, there's like another tire set that's actually like a little tiny bit better. In like, dirt or something like that. Oh, or in snow. Than the devil tires, but it's like, oh. You're still gonna skid. Maybe the studded tires were necessary. Yeah, we're good. We're good. We're good. It's just not like... I mean, I still got decent grip anyways. But can I catch up to him? Oh, I probably can, actually. Nice. I mean, think about it. If I actually do beat this guy, which is probably not going to happen in this Grand Prix because I've quit one of the races, so I clearly don't have enough points there. But if I manage to beat him, like, with some of the parts, I think I'll count that as a win. I can show off on my other save what it looks like when you got all the parts decked out. But... Yeah... What else? Oh, he bought four extra fans that were 50 Australian each. Like, oh my gosh. Uh, I've got the case. It was a very, very decked out case. Um, above the cost that I would usually buy a case at. Uh, everything was kind of above the cost what I'd usually buy. And two SSDs. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, mate. But uh, I don't know. I don't think you need two SSDs. 990 Pros as well, which are like, they're nice, but, oh boy, for games, nah, man, no one's gonna know. No one's gonna know if you've got, like, a very, very straightforward, uh, like, a silicon power, you know, like, just something like that, like a UD90. No one's gonna call you out on that. <laughs> and before someone then goes, oh, actually, the UD90, like, lacks a DRAM cache, and it's actually, like, very bad under, like, high Q depth like, uh, workloads, and I'm like, oh, okay, fine. But, you know what I mean, it's like, there's a lot, there's a lot of very alright solid state drives between the 990 Pro and the, and the UD90. So, I don't know. Apparently, I am the king at Snowland. I like as well that it's, like, is it just a texture swap? Is this implemented as just a simple texture swap, or is it properly, like, yeah, we had to, like... Dude, that waterfall is just spewing snow, I just realized. So, okay, let's add it up. There are, um, seven tracks in the quick play mode. Two of the tracks have, uh, longer routes in the Grand Prix mode. And then, once you hit, uh, this mode, two of the tracks become snow versions, if you want to count that as, uh, you know, a new track, and you get Sukuba. That's 12 total tracks, although if you're going to count this as the same as the regular version, then it's only 10. And if you're going to count the long versions as mostly the same, and it's really only 8. But even then, I mean, for a game of this length, that's a good number of tracks. There's a lot of games that came out well after this one, or around this time, then... Yeah, the number of tracks is sort of the same. Yeah, I think it's very easy to get second right now. Um, yeah, okay, so they're both 3200, those ones. Yeah, we, we can just wing the Supremes, bro. The grip is too good. And it has to load. It's a big track, I guess. Now you're gonna see the Supreme shine. Am I ever gonna skid? We'll see. Like, is it just like, ah, oh, just take corner, you know? Oh, that really hurt. Listen, I beat him last time, but now I'm, I, I don't know if I could do it at this rate. 
Because he's going to get his head start. Oh, come on, Supreme Tires. You're not doing your work. I mean, I'm not skidding, but... I don't know. It doesn't quite feel like I'm turning in as hard as I probably should. Especially given that I wonder on what, racing plus one? Yeah. Oh, that was just a jump. Ugh. I mean, I could probably redeem this and get some points, but, uh... Strangely much more effort to get past people right now. <laughs> Supreme Tires. Supreme Tires, you're on notice. Yeah, he's, he's powering ahead. I'm not going to catch him. Yeah, just a bit of like weird flight out of nowhere, huh? Go off the jumps, round the bend. Yeah, it's not like tons far ahead, actually. Break, round to the left, not. Corner, right, right. <laughs> yeah, I'm not gonna catch him, but. Yeah. Cause he's it oh. oh. Well, especially not this right. I don't know what's going on with this one, I tell ya. I'm a lot closer than I thought I would have been after that, like, first lap, but not close enough, because he is faster around here. And it's, he just slowed down just to flex a little bit. Or I got a really good lap just then. One of the two. There we go. Bit more money. I can actually buy one of these other parts. So how about let's buy the, uh, the chassis. Which isn't going to do too much, but helps the acceleration, which I think actually, actually that is probably going to add a, quite a fair bit to my performance. Big dome. With the supreme tires. Alright, the acceleration's gonna be kinda whack. Oh, look, watch it go! This is secretly the strat. Who cares about slowing down? I'm faster than everyone right away. Now all I need is a six gear, you know? Probably beat this guy around here, actually. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Woo! I completely lose all my speed, but it's okay. The grind never stops. I I think that's that's one of my the things I really really like about this game is that yeah you know there's a little bit of a you need to get some money in order to buy your parts, but it doesn't take very long until you get enough money to buy those parts. Other than, I guess, another 15,000 for, uh, for, uh, the, the, uh, engine. That might be, that might be a bit out of reach. I don't know. Because it's like, either you win a race and you get 1,500, or you come second and you get 1,000. And that either means, if you get 1,000, that means you tried 15 races. If you got 1500, then it's only 10, but you probably would have won this already. Still, lap record. That's probably a decent shot at, like, winning this next time. Oh my gosh, two people are stuck. They, ca they can't figure out the ramp. Oh, did, did he get stuck on that? 
Maybe this is secretly, like, where he just gets stuck all the time. And you just get lap records all over the shop. Nice. Very, very nice. There we go. More points for me. Too bad it's the final round and there's no way I'm, like, beating him on this one, but... Still. Uh, I don't know why I'm switching tires. I don't need to do that anymore. If I manage to win this, I've got enough points to buy the transmission, but, uh... Ah, oh, the acceleration's so good, though, I tell ya. Bonk, bonk. Actually, I think I might be able to catch up on this one. Because I wasn't, like, too far off, was I? And that was before the Supreme Tires and the, um... And the acceleration. Yeah, I can do that kind of corner now. Oh, it's just such a good feeling to be able to, like, take the same corners even more aggressively than you did before. Like, you're learning, you're take, you're, you're driving better as you go, but you're also getting a bit of a fun, like, little RPG stat improvement. I know someone's gonna go, what, what kind of role are you playing in Choro Q? And the answer is, yeah, I know, I know. Doom is an action RPG. There you go. Well, I thought I could catch up, but, uh... Unless he invites me a bit more, but I don't think I've got enough on that final straight to really, like, make it work. Here we go. Wah! Yeah, no, I don't, I don't think I can make it stick. Dude, it's insane how, like, far ahead we're getting out of everyone else. And still, it's just fight at the front. It's like Max and Lewis fighting when it was only that. Actually, no, it was pretty close for everyone, wasn't it? That's a second F1 reference of the day. For an otherwise dull race, I've mentioned it more times than, like, actual good competitions. Oh. You know, if I probably took that a little better, I might have had a better chance, but... I think it was still a chance, I don't think it's... Did you like that sign for car, by the way? Car. Just C-A-R. Just take my pit lane. There you go. Could have, could have shortcutted through the pit lane. Totally safe move. Oh well, you win some, you lose some, and we lost it all. I'm gonna see if I can do like, like a, just a casual, uh, casual big dome, just for, just for that little bit of extra money. I know it's only 700, but it's like, it'll, it'll be over quicker than the others. And I only need 3200. And other than that, I guess, you know, we just keep trying for the, uh... Either we get the Supreme Engine, or I win. And I think I'll probably win once I get the transmission. Because a lot of the races where I'm losing is, like, races where you have to go fast. And having the faster transmission does mean I'll get to leverage... Either a better top speed, or just better gear ratio. One of the two. But it does mean I still have to think in manual transmission mode, so... Is it really any better? Who knows. So, it's such a good feeling to just, like, keep, like... ...dancing on these people, I tell ya. Oh. There we 
god. So I'm starting to think that maybe it's just Twitter is a bad influence for me. Because, <laughs> meanwhile on my Fetty, it's like it comes up once, people chat about it for like a hot second, and then move on to the next big thing. There's lots of big things all over the shop, but... I kinda like that, it's fast moving, you know? No one got stuck on the ramp this time. Um, so maybe, maybe it's just me. Because I used to always complain about Reddit a fair bit as well, on the earlier streams. And it's like, yeah, like, I know I shouldn't be, like, looking at, like, the trolls of Reddit, because it's kind of low effort, and a lot of people are there to just, like, farm engagement, and then advertise. You know how it do be. Okay, let's get the MT6 Supreme! So the only thing left is an engine. Which, uh... Technically, there is an engine plus three available. But... I mean, you might as well go for the, you know, the Supreme at that point. Actually, if I wanted to sell some things as well, I don't think I've really got that much that, like, would add up. But you can't buy, other than your chassis, all the other parts again, so... You know what, we might as well stuff you Horn 2 and Horn 1 and Analog and Big Meter and... 84 normal and MT5 speed and MT5 high speed and normal steering and normal suspension and lightweight suspension and normal engine and all around three and all around an off road plus one and racing plus one. We're good. There we go. I'm a bit closer. I'm a little closer. All right. Let's drop a save there. Not that I'm gonna end, but that we're gonna we're gonna fight for this. But I might not win this first one because this is like the one that would actually be like entirely speed limited by the engine. But if I do manage to win it, then cool. Maybe the second one as well. Might be a tough one. In the last race. So I'm probably not going to catch up to him, because uh, I could never have caught up to him. Hopefully, once I can get past these fellas... Oh my gosh! <laughs> For reference, uh, my max speed was topping out at 125 miles on 5th gear. Uh, it turns out... There's, there's not much road to go faster. Like, if I do this, am I going... No, I'm slowing down, because I'm, <laughs> I'm not at the right gear. The gear don't help. I couldn't have bought anything else though, like other than you know save the three thousand for an en for the engine. But I, I still got a I I've still got a hunch I could probably win the Grand Prix, the Grand Prix, if you will. But man, he's fast. Unless he's using the Chaos Emerald to walk, or something. How much do I get to rip into Sonic the Hedgehog? I quoted a bunch, despite, like, sort of souring my opinion over time to the point that I don't have any intention to play any Sonic game on stream. I don't know. <laughs> There's other Sonic games, but I don't know. Okay, let's keep rolling, shall we? Would land. I would this land. Again, I'd just like to note, the music is great, not only in this game, but all of them. It's so good. I like how you go straight through, like, the, the roof. I'm playing through, um, Need for Speed Hot Pursuit 2 a bit on the side, and one of the, um, one of the tracks has a very similar kind of tunnel. Um, I think it's the desert track, is like this. And it's like, there's a, there's a ramp, and it goes towards the tunnel, and when you're in, like, faster cars, you'll bump, you'll crash into the top of the tunnel. And it's just like, you just gotta know you gotta slow down there. It's 
bit, it's a bit all over the shop opposite too. It's charming, but uh, listen, I like for for all its warts, I I really like Choro Q. And I know that they're, they're like fairly different games, but it's like I don't know. There's a part of me that's like this kind of stuff, sort of is a bit more timeless. I don't know. Despite like very kind of very PS1 looking graphics and presentation. I don't know. There's a part of me that really likes this. Usually as well, this is this is one of my f favorite parts. Usually most of the games I've played on stream are games that I've had a personal attachment to. And despite this being one that I've really only found out quite recently. Like I know my mate had Road Trip Adventure, but I didn't like, didn't really click into me until I like played uh, the others of the Charo Q trilogy. Although there's there's also Charo Q Wonderful on the PS1, so it's over. It's so over. It's not really snow waterfall at that point. This is a snowfall. Oh, while I'm on a roll of peeving people off, I listened to the new, was it, uh, Cindy Lee album? Okay, I, it'd be kind of embarrassing if I didn't come second. He's trying, he's trying, but it wasn't quite there yet, so... Uh, it did not really click with me at all. It was long, it was two hours, and it definitely... I mean, it had some different songs, but did it have two hours of different songs? I don't know if I'm sold on that one. Um... I suppose we can maybe beat him on this one, though. Um, I'm not sold on the, like, the length of the album. Um... It could have totally been trimmed and... Uh, I, I think the worst part as well is that none of it was, like, tons better or tons worse than the rest of it as well. So, being a long experience, it's like, you've just gotta, like, have your line of notes, just pay attention and really, like, learn it. And that's probably the people who really appreciate it. The people who are either in a certain mindset and they're just, like, getting there right away, or uh, really sat down to understand what's going on in that music. Uh, but for me... Like, I mean, to be fair, I do like to, to analyze my music and stuff like that, but... I don't know, there's a part of me that's like, man, a lot of it was kind of similar. Gosh, I am... With the Supreme Tires, I'm not doing as hot. I think it's, it's gonna be like, iterate and iterate until, uh... I managed to get enough money for the Supreme Engine, and then it's like, yep, whoop, yong, zoom away. Because if I used to win this, and I used to win the, um, like the other races, I gotta be able to catch up on this one. Either that, or he's just cheating. He saw me on weaker parts, he went easier on me. And now he's like, oh, you've got everything but the but the chassis. Okay, get the chassis then. Drake, where's the, where's the supreme chassis? I'm not getting it. Go get the supreme chassis. I don't know. I don't know if the chef, if the wheels have done something, but it's not as grippy as the uh, the the tires I'm used to. You know what they say: a poor craftsman blames his tools, and a great craftsman knows his tools are wrong. He doesn't have to blame them. Shouldn't have bought them in the first place. But no, I think my my lap times are legitimately like much worse. It's not that he's going faster, so I'm just. Really dawdling.
Yeah, maybe it would have been wise to hold on to the on-road tires. I mean, in theory, I can just buy them back. It's no issue, but... Or alternatively, is it just the engine? Like, I really, really need the engine to top everything off. I took that quite smoothly, though, I'll tell you that. I've been bonking the walls the whole time there. But not fast enough, unfortunately. And not a lap record, so I know I'm not as fast as I used to be. At seven, seven hundred, nearly halfway. Oh, I can nail this one though. I tell you. Let's snow. Let's see what I did there. I know. I know. So otherwise, what is happening in the rest of May? I don't think there's really that much happening. May's been cold, I tell ya. We've had like some rather like chilly days. It was like a day in Sydney, or a night in Sydney. No, it was a day in Sydney and it hit a max of 11. 11 degrees Celsius. That's like, what is that in Fahrenheit? Like. Is that actually 45? It's like, this is Sydney. We sometimes have days of 40 Celsius. Or like 120. And then it's just like uh, 11. <laughs> right on the coast too, so I can't even... I, I've got no clue. At least the night wasn't much colder. Because you lose the sunlight, but... Sail fast run. It's weird that like you can like absolutely floor it on this track. Like he's so far behind. And it's not even just the snow version, like I'd, I'd assume the regular version is just like this as well. Maybe it's because there's no like real fast section, so whatever, you know, ben benefits is getting out of the engine just never comes. So it's a very nice and cozy game. Good old snowy lake. Everyone likes a good snowy lake as well. Um, yeah, uh, I don't know. There's not really much for me. Uh, I played... Um, I did play one game over the past week, which was uh, the GBA version of Smashing Ride. Um, I do not know at all who made the original arcade version of Smashing Ride, but I do know there's a GameCube port that is pretty faithful from the looks of it. Um, or Smashing Drive, sorry, not Smashing Ride. Um, uh, the GBA version is a very curious beast, because uh, it's by the same guys who did uh, big Mother Truckers on the GBA, which means, you guess it, it's, uh, very, very stripped down 3D. Um, since I haven't played the console versions of Big Mother Truckers, I cannot tell you at all how faithful the GBA version is, but comparing the, uh, arcade and the GameCube version of Smash and Drive, um, they really tried on this one. It's like, it, like, I think... The problem is that uh, Smash and Drive looks kind of awkward in places, but also uh, it's the GBA. You guys are insane for trying to stick this closely to it. Um, so there's obviously things like I think there's control systems that are just like not they're not like re-implemented in the in the GBA one. Like I don't think you can swipe to the side. Um, it's pretty straightforward. You just kind of steer left and right and accelerate. Um, and there's a horn button. And break button. Okay, he's only two ahead. Can we catch up with this one? A 
there's a nice oh I actually the worst part is that like I don't know if there's enough races to get the upgrade before I basically get to this point again <laughs> It is better to go down the side route in the future. I haven't even gotten any upgrades, so this is going to be a pure, like, re-skill kind of run. Or I don't, like, choke hard on this one corner in particular. I'm just going to, like, take it very, very slow and casual. Ugh. Pass, let me through. <laughs> Do I can I oh oh no no I can actually win this one maybe. We'll see. Um so yeah, so the GBA version of Smashing Drive, uh just like the GameCube version and actually the arcade version is literally the arcade game. There exists two modes, arcade mode and survival mode, but uh at least in this version they are basically the same. Oh I gotta itch in my nose. Ah, I got pause itch. Ah. Sorry, fellas. <laughs> uh, it was, I read the manual as well just to like confirm that I wasn't going insane and the answer is uh, nope, they both read like they are exactly the same. It's like arcade mode. It's like it's the arcade experience. And then survival mode is don't run out of health. But guess what? They both have health. Maybe it's the amount of health or the speed of the health. Um, but uh, no, they're, they're both basically the same. They go through the same uh, three routes, and each route has three like steps, and each step is about three minutes long. So the whole game will probably take about half an hour if you're breezing it. Um, probably less, actually. Uh, there's also a little bonus level at the end. So I guess ten stints in total, plus uh, three bonus levels at the end of each... Uh, of those main synths, so maybe 13? I don't know if you're gonna count it, but... Oh, this is just sad. That is just a sad... corner right there. And I gotta beat him on the harder part. Oh. We're good. We're good. Ah, oh, perfection right there. But now it comes to the hard part. I gotta fight for this. I gotta fight for it. He does take that one left a little slower. Actually, he takes this right slow as well, doesn't he? Yeah. We did it! Woo! One another one, baby. More money for me. We're only one point behind now. Dude, I actually could catch this back and we could just like win it now. We'll see. I love how it's just like been, been three hours, you're just seeing the same tracks again and again, but me trying at them. Um, but yeah, the, the main gameplay of Smashing Drive is you have one competing taxi driving in front of you, and for some reason, despite the fact that you've already picked up a passenger, you are somehow competing against another taxi. I'm not really sure how, but okay. There's also a time limit. The time limit is generally just a tad bit longer, but it's really close in some tracks. It's like, or some like levels. It's, I don't know what's going on there. Um, the levels themselves, you drive through various um, city. It's just, you know, what is, what is a city in a game? Well, I guess you got like, uh, like square angle streets or some kind of, wider kind of suburby areas basically that um, certainly it all comes together in a nice you know, kind of arcadey concepts but on the on the um, on the GBA version especially it's like I can only tell what I'm looking at when I look at the arcade version I see the exact same corners and like jumps and things and I go oh okay um, they've even tried to like port the soundtrack over, so it's like these very, very bit-crushed, like, loops of what, I guess, the original game already did as loops. So it actually isn't, like, too bad, but it does get a little annoying, especially, um, I was struggling on the first stage in particular. Um, 
because the AI would finish before I managed to like get to the end. And I don't know, you just had to like route it quite right in order to get to the end. Oh, dang it. Come on, come on, come on, come on, can I beat him? And we're good. Dude, I might have this actually. Okay, I've got two options. Either I grind, I don't know, for another, like, three races. Or, we try our hand at this. We actually try to succeed. And if not, then I guess, I'm, I guess I've got the, the upgrades up there. But I'm confident, I'm confident, if this is smooth, we're good. We can nail this without actually getting <laughs> the Supreme Engine. And that is a good flex. Oh. Oh, that right. Mm. Oh. It's always hard to deal with those guys in front of you, though. Uh, I might be able to catch up. I don't know. We'll see. Man, this this little tiny engine—it only gets you so far. Only so far, I tell ya. I'm catching up though. Although I'm kicking in some rather, rather unfortunate drifts, so... Oh, we're good! We're good! I've kept it clean! I've kept it very slow as well. <laughs> Like that, that was losing too much. Uh... I think he's got me on this one. I think he's definitely got me on this one. I'm, I don't know, do I have to, do I accept it? No, I'm not gonna accept it. We're gonna we're gonna load that save. We're gonna Alright, quit. Da, da, da. We're gonna get that money. We're gonna get that cash money. And if that means I guess winning Big Dome three times, then sure. Or four times. Well, we gotta get that supreme engine. I'm like, it's, it's too, it's too close to keep fighting for it. And since we're we're tied, we're right at the end of the championship. You know, I think it's just better to get a little bit of the money to get the supreme engine, and then whoop them on that final race, as opposed to you know having to start the whole thing over again. I'm actually kind of impressed that you can get that far without the supreme engine, but yeah, no, nah, I think the game, I think the game knows. You know what, like, you know, if I was a little more patient, or really if anyone, like, you'll get the money, you know. Skill gets you most of the way there, and it certainly gets you into the money spots, which means you're making progress to earning all these fancy parts, I guess. Or the alternative is just immediately then buy the engine plus four, and it's like good enough. But no, I want to be supreme, dang it. I'm 
I'm pretty sure this is still quicker than uh, the snow day though. Actually, I think, oh, I don't know. If snow day is like one minute, then it's like right on the money. I keep calling it snow day as if it doesn't have an actual name. That being said though, I guess, you know, a lot of the like localized names in a lot of these Charo Q ones are mm, here and there. I'd, although I do know Road Trip Adventure is, like, remarkably, like, faithful in the terms of, like, the writing is unhinged. The, the, the writing in, in later Charo Keys gets very, very crazy. Okay, we are... How far away? It's 15... Yep, okay. Exactly, exactly three races away. <laughs> We just keep dr driving. We keep doing the grind. I was like, hey, check it out. It's been three hours. <laughs> Congrats, people. You have survived three hours of the stream. I swear there's not much more. Hopefully I finish before midnight. <laughs> I was going to two-part this one. I wrote day one and not one-off showcase on, this, on the, uh, the stream title as well. But uh, then I was like, you know what? I'm on a roll. And also, I hadn't done the, uh, the championship yet. Would have been a very, very short second stream, wouldn't it? Yeah. So what is next for me to play? Um, oh, I got to the end of Guitar Hero 80s. I'm just doing some full combos uh, now. Um, but I, I guess I've got actual, like, opinions of Guitar Hero 80s now, so... Uh, the TLDR is, I don't feel it's amazing. I think... There's something kind of great about the track variety just on its own for Guitar Hero 2. And that's not captured in Guitar Hero 80s, but it is captured in Guitar Hero 3, so... Different devs managed to figure out the same vibe. Um, that being said, you know, it isn't necessarily trying to be Guitar Hero 2, no. Um, but I also think that there's something missing from it. It's got a lot of... Um, it kind of... I think too many of the songs have lame choruses when it comes to, like, guitar parts. There's not much going on in them. Um, or it's like a, a song where, yeah, really, like, not much goes on. Like, I can't rip on the earlier songs too much. But, like... I can definitely rip on it once it starts happening later. Although I know Guitar Hero 2 is Cherry Pie and I can rip into that one. And it's also got Red Lottery in the bonus category, so... But I don't know, there's something to me when, um, like... Uh... Like, I Wanna Rock has like a... Kinda just, okay, verse. Um, I'm trying to think of another one that was just like... Ballroom Blitz is okay, but again, the chorus, it's like, not much is going on in the chorus. Um, even, like, some of the later songs, it's like, I don't find... Uh, what's, uh, what's, what's in the last tier that was just kind of like, oh, okay. Mm. I don't know, I can't, I can't recall off the top of my head. That's the pro that's my problem, is that, like, despite playing through the, each song, like, quite a few times, mm, it's not really clicking with me. But, like, what songs were there and what, what my experiences were. But I think, yes, in general, it doesn't get as hard. Uh, the easy songs are still on the easy side, although sometimes they throw in, like, a very overcharted solo in there. Not overcharted, but just, you know, compared to Guitar Hero 2, certainly overcharged it's just harder to full combo for no reason uh and no song was really like that hard to fc because most of them are pretty straightforward except for a solo so that's that uh bass parts are generally more of the same i probably i'm going through some full combos i've done seven of them so far just the, the beginning seven that are on the score hero list and i've actually got um like, a hunch I might be able to FC everything on base. Maybe. There might be one or two where I'm like, oh, darn. But, like... 
it might be very straightforward. Because a lot of them are like, either it's just the same riff and you get no solo. Or... I don't know, so... Yeah, so I'll, I'll, I'll keep working through that. Um, obviously, it's, well, I guess I'm doing that and I'm devving Guitar Hero World Tour, so it's like, oh, two different games. Uh, I do not know if I would jump into playing my own Guitar Hero World Tour set in full. Um, I don't think I'm that good at drums, so I don't think I'd be able to nail the drum parts. I have certainly never, like, I'm not that good at, I can't do expert, I can do hard on quite a bunch of songs, and then it gets very tricky on some other ones, but I try my best. But I can certainly not do hot for teacher on expert. That beginning is such a killer because it's like there's no star power. It's it's the very very first thing in the song and it absolutely crushes you. And the regular riff is also like kind of intense, so I'm just gonna build up dexterity and be able to like hit the drums faster. That's pretty much it. Like one hand faster as well, because I know Guitar Hero isn't like too demanding when it comes to like rolls and stuff like that. I love these, like, dueling synths, by the way, on this one track. Uh, the music track. <laughs> Final lap! But yeah, no, this game, this game is certainly vintage, certainly worth the play. I have no idea if it was ever re-released in any capacity. But I really hope that people don't forget this one to time. Uh, someone probably remembers this, because at least if you have a, a European release, there's probably somewhere out there who's like, oh, okay. There's actually, there's a, there's a weird, like, handful of, like, European-only releases. Um, like I played a, I, I mentioned... Monsters Inc., uh, Scare Island, Scream Team, um, on the PS2, and that's a Europe-only release for some reason. Was there another one I played that was Europe-only? Alright. Supreme, Supreme! Supreme, Supreme, Supreme! So check that out. Acceleration and body, or, and body, and top speed have gone way up, which means we can now take another crack at the world tour, and maybe I can actually accelerate to the sixth gear. But this also means actual attempt at beating this one guy again. Whoa! Whoa! Get that supreme engine kicking in. Woo! Still drifts like a champ, though, I tell you. But whoa, we're in the sixth gear already. Woo! 126 miles an hour is no problem now. I should have gone this first. Woo! Oh. Wow. <laughs> wow, what was I missing out on, I tell ya. Just keep going, keep going faster. Keep on accelerating. Dude, what took me like a minute before is now like... Yeah, 48 seconds, because I'm just... I'm just going, I'm just skidding. Dude, not even, not even that guy can compete. Not even that guy knows how to deal with this. I love this, it's like, you stick, you stick with the game, you get its upgrades, and then it rewards you with, it's silly. <laughs> That's why Char Q gets a, a, a soft, a, a good 9 out of 10. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> what kind of rating systems do people use these days? Dude, we're going to lap some fools. We're going to do it. Also, can I, can I get to 47 seconds? 
Because I kept dinging some walls before. Yep, we're totally about to lap some people. I'm not that right though. Gonna catch up? I don't think we're gonna catch up to laughing though. Yeah, I'm just eating some time on that one. Oh! <laughs> Skid hard. That's all you need. Well, that was uh, remarkably anticlimactic and very straightforward, but it's great. Look at that, I beat him by one point. You know what that means? Congratulation! <laughs> and you get more credits. Why not? These are the super credits. This is really where the game stops. I think there's maybe one small thing to check out, but other otherwise, this is pretty much the entirety of the game. So, uh, my my day one stream became a one-off showcase kind of, kind of thing. But you know what? It's worth it, because Choro Q is such a cool game. It's so cool, I love it. You got all these little tiny cars, and I mean, you saw, like, that was like, what was it, 30 different cars I got going on? You got a, a good number of tracks, the music is great. There's a lot of PS1 racing games that fail to, like, be that consistent and be that kind of charming. A lot of, there's a lot of other ones, like, I, I, I will forever note what, what's the five star racing as being just, like, it's not a simple 1500 game, but it sure kind of feels like it. Also, you're gonna overtake him? There you go, you got there. Um, it does feel like that, that one for that game. Um, uh, what is it? There's another one that was kind of like that. Oh, actually, hilariously, there is a simple 1500 game by the Choro Q people as well, by Taraka. And uh, it does control kind of like Choro Q. It is definitely a simple game, and, and not like, oh, because it's in the name, but it's like, that game is actually like very, very straightforward, but it's also, at least it's like, well, it's in the name and, and the price. Makes sense, but. I think there's just something great about how this one comes together. And uh, if you liked it, if you think that there were parts that were cool about it, one, give it a go. And two, wait until we, we play the other ones at later points. Because yeah, that's going to be good fun. So. Maybe I should play some other racing games on the channel at some point. Oh, I know how your credit song goes. You can't bait me out this time. Look at him just zooming around though, I tell ya. There was something with the 90s and like this kind of woodblock kind of sound in the back. Or is that a cowbell? That's more cowbell than woodblock. Thank you so much for playing my game. We did it again. So what do you get? Well, not really anything more than that. Um, but if you go to a sprint race, you will see uh, nothing actually. Nothing extra. Actually, if you go to practice, this is the other thing. So practice now has everything. We have uh, the normal circuit, the highland short, the tunnel short, the woodland, the normal, you know, all this. There's also a drag race, interestingly, in here, as well as you got your snow mountains and your highlands long. We can check out the drag race just for funsies. Um, this is probably mostly a test of can you gear shift at the right points. Uh, and this was used in the intro, you remember that? In fact, I think most of the games have a drag race mode kind of still in them. A good old 400 meter dash. You can get a good drag race score, so... There you go. <laughs> There's not really too much to it, so... But yeah, that's it. That's Choro Q in its, in its entirety. Uh, you know, maybe a little more if you ever wanted to 
figure out what the garbage wagon looks like. That's right. It's, uh, it's, hold on, wait, wait, wait. No, that's, sorry, that's the buddy shop. Yeah, like, actual garbage truck. <laughs> there you go. But, uh, until then, I would like to thank you so very, very much for watching. If you stuck around all the way, uh, that, well, if you didn't stick around all the way, how are you finding out about this? But if you did stick around all the way, uh, you can follow on Twitch or subscribe on YouTube, uh, where you'll see either the full stream on 8.30pm Australian Eastern Standard Time or the VOD, which comes up sometime later. Depends when YouTube processes it. I don't know. Um, you can also follow me on the Fetty, m.bnl.com. Cool place. I say some things sometimes. I might say some stuff about Computex when it happens, which is not next week, but later. Um, <laughs> and uh, I guess you can follow on Twitter. I don't say stuff on Twitter. Don't send me art commission requests, please. Please, I'm not buying any art. <laughs> uh, but yeah, other than that, you know, stay chill. Have a great week. You know, it's Monday. The week is nigh. Does nigh mean the end? Does nigh mean it's soon? It's ending soon? Or... I don't know. It's too late, so... <laughs> Have a good one, everyone. See ya!